purse, popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches, we be giving them the gospel. I'm the cocky, 12 Sakari members with me, we be moving like apostles. True, some sisters is dead traps, hair wraps, but you feel a thought, no filler. The church don't even know the truth, they can even tell you what Israelite. Jack in the Arab selling you all the switches and the malt liquor or the Ishmaelite. You show a nigga slave ships in the Bible, still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then the nigga gotta find out what them missiles like. All praises, all praises. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory is due to Yahweh, and we do so by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. This is the deacon. This is the deacon Sakari, your beloved neighbor, your beloved neighbor. Um. <clears throat> back with another fire fire packed live show back with another fire packed live show um let me just explain to you guys what this debate is going to be about so as you guys know we have a lot of debates and dialogues and exchanges on our platform but sometimes when a nigga is getting, when a nigga acting too scary and it's worth it, let me say that again. When a nigga's acting scary and it's worth it, then I'll go over to their platform because that's my only way I can get my hands around their throat theologically. So last night I went into these Christians on these Christians YouTube channel <laughs> And it's a whole panel of Edomite Christians and one token Oreo Negro. Um, and, you know, they were talking about Paul, talking about Paul preached that you didn't have to earn your salvation. Paul preached against the law. The law don't save you. You know, the same Christian jargon, blah, 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 blah rhetorics and diet rhetoric and diatribes right so i was surprised they let me on they let me on but they let me on before i, don't, I think this was a few years ago maybe a couple years ago they let me on there that's where you guys seen me debate um the pastor joe wyrosek where we talked about who the israelites are where well, i was calling them glass joe and they didn't know why i was calling them glass joe it was like, dude, the host, the host was like, dude, why are you calling him Glass Joe? Anyway, um, so I downloaded the video. I also recorded it uh, just in case they took it down, but I downloaded it. Um, I didn't edit it at all. I put it on my Patreon. So those of you who are on Patreon, you would have seen it first. Now I'm about to play it live for the world now because that channel that i went on it's pretty big they got more subscribers than me but they don't have a lot of traffic so airing it on here is going to bring optimal edification to the israelite community and also the christian community so before i air the debate and show you guys this this uh this live exchange here this live exchange here uh i want to let you guys know first one thing two things i want to let you guys know two things before we get into the live debate <clears throat> uh james snap jr i just want to preface you guys about this individual james snap jr let me just share my screen real quick to show you the guy that I was debating James Snap Jr. He is a New Testament textual criticism. Or that's what he specializes in. That's what he's a scholar in is textual criticism. What is textual criticism? Textual criticism is understanding how the manuscripts were formulated, understanding the variances and errors within the ancient manuscripts, comparing ancient manuscripts, dating them, so on and so forth. How are they composed? Who wrote them? How close is it to the original? Because we don't have the autograph. 
it's a very interesting field and i i love that field because i found a lot in that field and it helps boost boost my faith um a lot so <clears throat> especially involving variants in the gospels meaning how mark will say it happened one way then matthew will say it happened another way and then john will say it happened one way and then luke will say it happened one way right that's all in the field or under the umbrella rather of sexual criticism so he's also a christian preacher and researcher now i didn't know who he was honestly i just hopped on there i didn't give a damn if it was uh the president of crimea i'm finna get on this their live show their channel and wreck some wreck some things up and shake some things up in the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahshua. So I looked him up afterwards. I said, oh, wow, that's James Snap Jr. I think he debated Dr. James White. He did work with Sam Shimon. Let me see. I think you can find it right here. You can find it. Uh, <clears throat> so he wrote, he wrote a lot of books. He's a well-known book author. Yeah, I think him and James White may have had some uh a few exchanges which is good because if i body james snap jr then dr james white you've been running for some years from sakari dr james white is probably one of the top i'm gonna be real top five christian apologists i would have to put dr james white there and dr michael heiser there as far as top five christian apologists who really can bang and has been banging for decades but anyway, if we body snap Jr., Dr. James White, your time is coming soon, my boy. Now, let's see. This is James. Now, I think this is one of his books he wrote. This is another book he wrote. Um, This is a debate he did. This is another debate he did. Sinaticus. So he's debating which codex. I'm not sure which codex he subscribes to, but he's debating the codex Sinaticus here. <clears throat> but he did some work with Sam Shimon. He may have even did some work with Vocab Malone. Who, who knows? But anyway, without further ado, y'all, y'all ready? Put them bombs in the chat if you want to see this nothing piece of garbage. Myself, I'm speaking of myself, this piece of garbage, myself, a nothing, a nobody, an uneducated and irrelevant individual within society confounding the wise put them bombs in the chat what well, is what the most high through his son said the babes will confound the wise <clears throat> all praises well let's get this going so uh <laughs> world premiere right uh let me load it up and uh now i'm gonna let it play through but I'm going to also stop it on certain points. Now, I want I want to just prepare you guys. James Snap Jr. has a, a slight speech impediment. <clears throat> now, also, too, I just want to make mention of a couple of things. James Snap Jr. has a slight speech impediment. So I may have to articulate what he's saying if you guys can't understand in certain points. I just want to make that make that clear. Secondly, again, this was their YouTube channel, so I couldn't dominate like I wanted to, brothers and sisters, but I believe through the spirit and power that the message was delivered properly, directly, correctly, and clearly. So without further ado, let's go. <clears throat> hmm. All right, let's see. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? There we go. All right, brothers and sisters, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's let's keep going. If the man who is place. uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law, mm -hmm. will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? So, why is Paul saying when you keep the law, you being uncircumcised, it's like you are circumcised, not in the flesh, but in the heart. Can you explain that, Mr. Nick or James? Well, or if you keep go reading. To, go to Romans 8, too. Romans no, 8, no, no, no. You no. Can understand. But see, here's the, here's the, different thing. Laws. Here's the thing. You can't, 
I, we can use proof text, but how can you run from the text that's not that's running? Written? Just keep reading, bro. It says, and if you are, not if you're not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who even if written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law. Like he's talking to the Jews who are judging people for not keeping the law, bro. That's okay, basically what this. you're doing. Verse he's talking to people like you are judging. Okay, for not keeping then the law. then I guess Paul is talking. He, he's teaching what I'm teaching. It says then he's talking he, to the Jews for judging the Gentiles for not keeping the law. OK, then break this down, Nick. Then he who is physically uncircumcised but mm -hmm. keeps the law will condemn you. Why? Who, who is the, Who is this person that's physically uncircumcised? For he who is physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you even with your written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law he's asking it's a question mark he's asking you a question for well, he is no, not there's, a, there's no yeah. i'm in the esv i'm in the esv and there's okay. no question mark here this well, is clearly saying there's a person who's uncircumcised but is keeping the most so you're in the law. esv i thought you guys i thought most of the hebrew israelites only read the king james why are you saying well, the ESV? that's just like how most white people think all black people look the same don't put me in a box or categorize me. Pop a purse, popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I keep 12 Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True. Some sisters is dead traps, hair wraps, but you still a thought though. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you you an Israelite. And the Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor or the Ishmaelite. You can show a nigga slave ships and the Bible still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then a nigga got to find out what the missiles like discord yet get in there we'll set up a show about this topic yeah uh real real quick y'all i'm sorry before we continue i'm having this problem one again so let me let me see something real quick i'm having this ridiculous internet problem and i was supposed to bend troubleshoot troubleshoot this problem one second, y'all. Okay, okay, I know exactly what's happening. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to, I'm gonna have to go to the YouTube. So you know what it is, guys. Now I know. Thank the Most High. So when I download a file, and I and I upload the file to play it on Streamyard, it's 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 heavy, heavy streaming. It turns into a heavy stream. So. And that that's gonna mess up my internet. So what I want to do is I'm gonna just go to his YouTube channel, and I'm gonna play it from there. That way, it won't draw too much from my internet, which is ridiculous. It's a large file though, but it's okay. I figured it out. I figured it out. I am happy about that because last time when we was watching the world famous Protestant, the the I was doing the file like that. And it was just bad. So let me just go to his and we're gonna stream it from his all praises. So let me just go ahead and remove this. Let me remove this. And we're gonna do it just like this in the spirit. All praises. And we can get some clear Check once out this verbal. Uh look at me. Uh, okay. a hard life with god if you're gonna you know not have a lot of some works for god but if you have oh if you don't my have bad, work my bad, for god, my bad. hold on yo oh. yeah uh, i gotta get going pretty soon okay so let me share my screen all right we got it y'all we got it we got it we fixed the problem now let's take a look at this let me share my screen one more time All right, I want everybody to enjoy this and get the picture perfect. All right. Dude, but I'd definitely like to talk with you more about this for sure. I think we That's might very, I think we might have some varying opinions. Although we agree on a lot, I think we might have some varied opinions on a couple minor things. But yeah, it would be cool to set up a show with you. Yep, sounds good. That's fine. I understand. Also cool. Thank you for having me on. No here. problem, bro. Come, let's talk further. If you're not on the Discord yet, get in there. We'll set up a show about this topic. Yeah. Okay. Cool, Does anybody have any more questions about the life, life of Paul? Yeah. Before James goes, does anybody in the chat want to say anything about Paul? Or maybe this uh, Hebrew Israelite guy. Do you, you got any questions about <laughs> Paul? 
Oh yeah. Um, so uh, I heard that the individual said. <laughs> now don't laugh at me, y'all. I had to disguise my voice because if they know if they notice me, they might kick me out. That's usually what these Christians do. So I had to disguise my voice. <laughs> Let me run that back one more time. In the chat, want to say anything about Paul? Or maybe this uh, Hebrew Israelite guy. Do you, you got any questions about <laughs> Paul? Oh, oh yeah. Um, so uh, I heard that the individual said that uh, Paul was teaching that you didn't have to earn your salvation. <clears throat> uh, yes. I guess, Paul, yeah. Paul says in Ephesians two verse eight uh, and nine. Uh, was saved by, by faith, by, by grace, the gift of God. Okay, so so Paul never taught that the law justified you? Paul thought it was justified by the blood of Christ. <laughs> okay, what about these guys? So my first question was, did Paul ever teach that the law justifies you? Everybody said no. Right, let's continue. Romans right. 2 and 13, where it says the doers of the law will be justified. Can you exegete that and help me out? Sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you exegete that and help me out? Uh... Romans 2. Paul is making a point that in, in Romans 1, but really it's also in Romans 1, but it continues through, through chapter 2, where first Paul says, look how bad these pagan peoples are. They do all sorts of things we know are, right, are terribly wrong. But then Paul says, we too have done wrong things. In fact, everybody has done wrong. It's kind of like when Jesus was asked himself, what must I do to inherit, inherit eternal life? He said, well, keep the commandments. Well, we all know that anybody who's lived a while will break some commandments. I'm sorry, y'all. Listen, listen. Now, listen. I want to do this for you guys. All right. I want to do this for you guys. We got two options here. We got two options. We don't have three options. I can play this all the way through without cutting in and saying anything, or I can I can give my commentary over it. Put a one in the chat if you want me to play it all the way through, or if you want me to commentate on certain points, put a two. I'm doing this for y'all. So however y'all want to do it. Because I just wanted to step in because he said, I think it would be better if I did commentate on it because you guys, I want you guys to understand what these Christians are doing here. Okay, cool. I see a lot of twos in the chat. So we'll do it like that. So he he said, basically what he said is when Christ told the man to keep the commandments, Christ was setting the man up for failure. He was telling us to do something that we absolutely cannot achieve. Why would why would Christ set you up for failure? Oh, oh, so he was he was moving in some type of deception. Some Christians even say that with with uh when Christ went to the woman and told and, and and he was ignoring her, the Canaanite woman. He ignored her and called her a dog to test her faith. So he was being deceptive. You guys wouldn't place that 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 title on Christ. Anyway, let's keep going. And so well, I'm saying, well, now what do we do? We, we've all broken commandments. So what's the alternative now? Do we just see and wait, wait for God to get, get condemn us? And that's where Paul then gives in chapter 3 of Romans, after saying that, let me just turn that out, after saying that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, both those who were given God's law and those who were given laws to just figure out for themselves, everybody's guilty. Yeah, but my God, question is, why does he say the doers of the law will be justified? Right. First of all, I'm going to go to where Christ said that, that you could be saved by keeping the law later on in this dialogue. But my question was, Romans 2 and 13, do you see how the most scholastic Christians will even run from run from a direct question well that that's something he says on the way to saying that everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of god both those that were given the law and have done done part of it but uh paul knows very well 
But nobody keeps all the law. Okay, so in Luke chapter one, verse five to six, it says John the Baptist's parents. Let me let me tell you guys something. Let me let me get the chat involved here. When a Christian says nobody can keep all of the law, that is a nonsensical, ridiculous, rudimentary, not question or statement. Why? Because if I keep the law and I break one of the laws. There's a law that tells me what to do when I break that law. So, yes, I'm keeping the law even when I break the law. There's a difference between being without sin and then, be, and then keeping the law. We're not saying that we're without sin. We're saying we keep the law. And back then, they kept it stridingly. And they kept it vigorously. And when they did error, they made animal sacrifice or whatever they had to do pertaining to the law to rec recon reconcile their transgression. So they kept the law even while in breaking the law. <clears throat> we got to start drilling these Christians because they don't know about the Hebraic culture. That's our culture. Continue were righteous before God and kept all the law, statutes, and commandments. Are you are you saying that John the Baptist... So, Lucky, let me rewind it. Let me rewind it. Because he said nobody kept the law, and I brought up John the Baptist's parents. Parents were righteous before God and kept all the law, statutes, and commandments. Are you are you saying that John the Baptist's parents were perfect? Because did anybody hear me say John the Baptist's parents were perfect? Even though in God's eyes they will be perfect. The Bible says King David was perfect, which we we address on this broadcast. Did I did I say that, or did I say the Bible says that they kept all the law, statutes, and commandments? You heard what I said, but that's the second time that a Christian tried to do this. That's the second time that a high level Christian tried to do this. Who was the first one? I think it was Pastor David Lynn. It was Pastor David Lynn, or was it Minister Michael Holloway, where I brought up Luke 5, 1 5 to 6, and they tried to say, Well, are you saying they're perfect? No, I'm saying what the Bible says, that they kept all the law, statutes, and commandments. So I don't think that's what it means. What is this, this brother again? Sorry, can you well, please well, Luke, that Luke, <clears throat> Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 6 says, they were righteous before God, walking in all the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, we know so, Christ said, be perfect as, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I don't think he would give us a false uh, uh, achievement. Now, let me, let me, let me say this. this. Have you ever heard of imputed righteousness and holiness? Have you ever heard of the imputed righteousness of Christ? And it's by faith alone that we have the righteousness. Does anybody know what imputed righteousness is? Now, first of all, this English muffin, whoever this dude is, he kept cutting in on the conversation. I'm trying to body, I'm trying to body your big homie, your OG homie, James Snap. And this English muffin keeps on cutting in, talking about the imputed the, the imputed righteousness of Christ. Basically, what that means is you get to be wicked as hell. Uh, basically, since Christ was righteous and uh, righteous and perfect and without sin, you're you if when you believe on him, that's now your righteousness. Not whatever you do, you can go blow, blow, <laughs> blow, crack smoke, blow rod, do anything you want, and 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 his imputed righteousness is gonna cover you for that. You're right. Christ's not the minister of sin, the Bible says, meaning he doesn't give you a pass or license to sin just because you believe on him. Yeah, imputed unto us. It's not by the deeds uh, of the law. Well, and well now, the, Bible, uh, the, Bible, people... the Bible says the law is our is righteousness. Amen. I said the law is our righteousness. This this guy said amen. When does the when did the Christian church ever say amen to that statement? Well, that's the scripture, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse twenty five, and more. Excuse me. Even in the new uh, in the New Testament scriptures, Romans chapter two, and also out of the mouth of Christ Himself, saying, "Your righteousness it is the, it is the sick that need a doctor, not the righteous." So there was people living in Christ's time that was righteous. It is. Okay, I agree. But there's also 
our righteousness could never get us to heaven. Our righteousness, we don't have to be righteous enough to prove we're Christians or get to heaven. There's a difference. I wanted James to respond if to I, that. If I could. What the individual just jumped in and said is kind of non sequitur. Yeah, so, sorry, uh, let, let, let James respond then, I guess. I'm yeah, sorry. As, as, as Luke is in, introducing uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, he describes them in this way. That, that's sort of the, the way that Noah is described. He's one who has found the grace of God. And, and, and uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth are both righteous before God. This is a way of saying they're good, good, good people. So I want you guys to hear that. When the Bible says <clears throat> that John the Baptist's parents were keeping all the law, statutes, and commandments, walking righteous, blameless before God, that just means they're good people. But wait a second. Didn't Christ say there's none good but one? Make your mind up, Christians. Are there good people or are there not? Or are there, is there only one good person? Is there none righteous or is there some righteous? See, you Christians don't know what the Bible is saying when it says what it says. <laughs> what do I mean by that? They'll go, oh, there's none righteous, not one. But then the Bible will say some of the Pharisees were righteous, that the blood of Abel was righteous, that King David was righteous, that uh, John the Baptist's parents was righteous. Oh, there's no, there's not good. There's none good but one. Oh, well, you know, John the, parents, uh, John the Baptist's parents were good. Make your mind up, man. Double-minded Christians. <clears throat> but we see later on that Zacharias, after he encounters the Archangel Gabriel, and expresses a little bit of doubt about the message. And so Gabriel then says to him, I am Gabriel. And this is his response. He says, I'm Gabriel who stands in the... So for, for those of you who don't know what he's doing, He's going to, he's continuing, he's continuing to read Luke 1, and he's going to show me where the angel had the mute Zachariah's mouth for unbelief. Okay, so here's what I want to tell you guys. Just because you break one of the commandments does not make you unrighteous. And again, because it caused, it, and he did, he his unbelief got his mouth muted. But it doesn't take away the fact that by and large, he's living a lifestyle keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments, which makes him righteous. And we know King David broke a heavy commandment, but the Bible says that was the only command commandment he broke, and he's still called righteous and perfect. So just because an Israelite breaks a commandment, it doesn't mean that they are unrighteous. It's about a lifestyle intent sincerity and a broken and contrite heart let's keep going presence of god i was sent to speak to you and be, bring you these glad tidings but behold you will be mute and not be able to speak until the day these things take place because you do not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time <clears throat> so a person could think that Zacharias was indeed very good a person could even Interpret the, the saying in Luke chapter 1, verse 6, that says they're both righteous before God, and take it to the extent and say, well, they, that, that must mean they never sin. Now, I don't think that's the way that Luke meant it. I don't think Luke said, all of a sudden, this perfect guy showed up in in Luke chapter 1. I don't think he meant to say that, that Zacharias is perfect. But even if a person were to take it that way, he also says later on, when Gabriel appears to him, he's made some kind of mistake and that's why he's not allowed to speak until john is born yeah not not believing in the angel uh but you mentioned that no one could be perfect do you are you familiar that the bible says that uh king david was perfect um if you would go ahead and bring up that verse and then we can execute from there because anybody that knows also too matthew 5 and 48 be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect about the law, about the life of David, what well, well, no, that David was, was not perfect. Okay, it's going to be First Kings. First Kings yeah, eleven and verse four. 
pretty sure King David did a few well, things. Well, he's away from, from the yeah. life of Paul, Nick. First Kings 11, verse 4. Uh, we, can go, we can go back to Paul, but I just wanted to, uh, to, to get your understanding on this predicated on a statement that you made. First Kings 11, verse 4. Yeah. What I'm reading is, for it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father, father David. And yeah, it's certainly yeah. not a statement that David was perfect. Yeah, David in the fell, King fell James, very badly with Bathsheba. Yeah, in the King James, it says, um, for it came to pass that his heart was not perfect, uh, uh, like, like King David's heart was perfect. Uh, yes, I think that's simply a matter of translation. Okay, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care to go to the Hebrew to prove if it means perfect or not. But back in, uh, back, back in Paul, because I want to try to stick to the topic. Back in Paul, um, when Paul says that, uh, that you know, he talks about faith, um, and you're saved by faith, and that's what you say. You're saved by faith through grace. As far as uh, Ephesians chapter two, now, this is still, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. For these other translations, I wanted to do this because I didn't have time then. I didn't have time then. He said it's a translation thing. We want to go to First Kings 11, and we want to see if it's calling King David perfect. So let's take a look. Verse 4, it says his heart was not perfect with the Lord, as was the heart of King David. Now watch this. Let's go to the word in Hebrew, which I didn't have time. So he's reading from the Eastern Orthodox Bible. That's what he's reading from. So let's take a look at this word for perfect here. All right, and then let's see. Perfect. Uh-oh, he's cut. You're cut, my man. You're cut. Full. Perfect. See, Christians don't understand what perfect means. It means complete, balanced, broken and contrite heart when you do transgress. That's what it means. But look, all the times it's used, let's go to the concordance. Uh, yeah, full, peaceable. Here we go. Perfect whole perfect let your heart be perfect his heart was not perfect and he walked in and he was not perfect with the lord as the heart of his data perfect you understand that you're dumb my man you christians didn't even know the bible said king david was perfect so let's continue let's continue here Or as uh, Ephesians chapter two. Now, does that, still mean, does that still mean you're saved by the law? Because faith is a part of the Mosaic law. Hold on. Uh, that's 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 you're saved by, by doing the law. The, the idea is Christ died on the cross. And when Christ died, he bore the sins for, for all humanity. And no, so well, my question, no, my question is, is, no, my question is, it's not that. Do we keep the law or not? We can get there, but is faith a part of the law according to the Bible? Well, uh, it is a, it's it something is a commandment to huh? believe. It's a commandment to believe the gospel, but it's not works though. For the, like it, it, it's the obedience of faith, you know. It, it says the obedience to the. It's like people say faith is a work, but it's not a work. And it also says that when you become a Christian, which is by faith alone, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is Wait, hold on. Obedient. You said, you said faith, faith is not a work. No, faith is not a work, brother. Uh oh, here's where here's where it starts getting surgical. Never let a Christian tell you faith is not a work. When faith is in the law, the law is works, and also Christ out of His own mouth says faith is a work. But it's okay. We love being Hebrew Israelites because it's so easy to cut people's heads off. Now, some people might say, well, all you got. So later on in this in this debate, Nick says, you Hebrew Israelites are so prideful. You just want to be better than everybody and you want to rule over people. And I said, it's not that. It's that you guys ain't putting no respect on the name of God's chosen people. But let's continue. It's by faith alone. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that is Wait, actually hold on. Obedient. Can you say, a, you say faith is not a work? No, faith is not a work, brother. Faith okay. is not a work. Can you, can you guys... Uh, um, that was faith at work, bro. <laughs> you see how they all three jumped on my helmet? Hold on, look. They all said it. He said faith is not a work. James Snap said no, faith is not a work. Then here goes Nick saying, "How is faith a work, bro?" Now let, let let's rewind it a little bit. Okay, John chapter six, verse twenty nine. Jesus answered and said, "Uh." Um, that was faith at work, bro. Okay, John chapter 6, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that you believe yeah. in him that he sent. So clearly, out of the mouth of who you guys believe is your Lord and Savior, he just said, Faith in him is a work. Why, why do you think he's going to say it again slowly? Say, say the verse. <laughs> you see that when you cut a nigga's head off and leave him smiling. My dad taught me that a long time ago, man. We were cut from a different cloth. It's called the game or infested cloth, right? And my dad told me, said, man, you got to learn how to cut somebody's head off and leave them smiling. What does that mean? Make them happy to be cut with the scripture. You understand? They don't even realize they're cut head rolling down the block, still smiling, but, they, but they're cut. Here go James. Whoa, 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 James Snap Jr. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can, 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 can you repeat that again slowly? Yes, your head is rolling down the block. Run down there and grab it. That's what I said. Well, let me rewind it real quick. Uh, that you believe in him that he said. So clearly out of the mouth of who you guys believe is your Lord and Savior, he just said, Faith in him is a work. Why? Why do you think he's going to say it slowly? Say it again slowly. Say it again slowly. Say it again slowly. Welcome to Hebrew Israel. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hold on. Who is this English muffin? This is the world. Hold on. At this point, at this point, I am getting a little irritated and frustrated. So I called the guy English Muffin. I did because he they keep all trying to, but that's what happens when I go on these Christians platforms. They all try to gang up on me and I'm fine with that. But let's at least have some order and decorum. And I don't mind talking to each one of you guys and which you guys will see me do during this whole debate. I, I literally destroyed James, he leaves. I destroyed Renee. The English muffin left before I can get to him. He knew what the business was. And then lastly, I destroyed Nick. Nick, and you notice if you're watching this, you ended your live stream. You had to end it. You didn't prompt nobody. You just clicked the end button and left. And you left me and Renee. If you're watching too, Renee, Renee is the individual at the bottom. If you're watching too, tell me I'm lying. He left and he left us in there to talk behind the scenes, because it was getting bloody. But anyway, let's keep going. Oh, what well, you're saying it says. Let's, 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 I, 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 I was, uh, you I was having a conversation. Yeah, I know. It's hard with the four or five people on the panel. I was Come having on. a conversation with James. I would okay. love to. I would love to give headshots to everybody <laughs> individually. Okay. But let's deal. Let's deal with decorum and order. So, okay. John chapter six. Verse 29, Christ out of his own mouth said, faith is a work, so I would like to get James' response. Uh, sorry, everyone. Renee, you've been real quiet and patient all the time. I just, a few people just jumped on because I put the link in the general. It's kind of hard when there's five people on at once, but uh, yeah. Uh, okay, when, when Christ is asked the question in John 6, 28, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Christ answers in the next verse. This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. When we believe in the one whom he sent, that is Christ, that when he died upon the cross, he died for us, and we receive his sacrifice for our sins, that's when our sins are paid for. It's not by anything we do, it's what Christ has done. How can okay. I be any, any less clear than it is? Did anybody, did, did anybody hear him address the scripture? <laughs> and why Christ is saying faith is a work when all four of you guys said it's not. I mean, 
Did anybody listen? I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. He's supposed to be showing us why Christ said faith is a work. I want to see if he could. Maybe I'm not listening correctly. Yeah. Uh, okay. When, when Christ is asked the question in John six twenty eight, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Christ answers in the next verse, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. When we believe in the one whom he sent, that is Christ, that when he died upon the cross, he died for us and we receive his sacrifice for our sins. That's what our sins are paid for. It's not by anything we do. It's what <laughs> Christ has done. Oh, my goodness. This dude. Is this the, is this, see, now, although he is a New Testament scholar, he has very minimal understanding with all due respect. You know, I know you spent probably 40 years and gave all that money to them colleges. You could have just came to Sakari, broke us off some bread, and we would have taught you. And you would have been, you would have came back to the school with a pair of handcuffs and chains in your hand and said, you're ready to go into your bondage. <laughs> Let's keep going. How can okay. I be any, any less clear than it is? Okay, can, let me read this and just get your take on this. Matthew 23 and 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are ye have to done and to not left the other undone. So just going off of John 6 and 29, and providing this as a proof text, we see that the faith is of the law and faith is also being called a work. So how are we stratifying the two? I think you're basically failing to see that when Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe that that is our job. Our job is to believe. And when we believe, God will transform our lives and make his lives a desire to do good works. But those works are not what saves us. Those works are things that we, are ways that we express our thankfulness to God for saving us. Okay, got you, got you. So, uh, speaking of, you guys hear that? So, the works, uh, the works that we do are, are us thanking God for saving us. <laughs> the Christian church is finished, man. The Christian church is finished of, of Christ, because I know. We're dealing with Paul, but I'm, I'm sure you guys don't believe Christ and Paul were teaching different gospels, right? No, right. They, they weren't. Okay, they were so the same one. so the parable about the penny. What does the penny represent in the parable of Jesus Christ? You have to be more specific. You, you mean uh? Now this is I'm telling you guys it gets worse. So Christians say you don't earn your salvation. But Christ gives a parable in Matthew 20. He says, there are laborers. They're working for something. They're working for a penny. The penny represents the kingdom. They had to work for the kingdom. So these guys didn't even know that parable. And this is where it gets more blood. The penny represent in the parable of Jesus Christ. You have to be more specific. Are you, you mean uh, the lost coin or which, which coin are you talking about? In Matthew chapter 20, there's a parable. Each person is working for a penny. Oh, oh that one. you mean the denarius? Okay. People get confused with parables and like use it to try to prove work salvation. So if you just like show us the verses. Well, or... I haven't, first of all, I haven't even gave my understanding on the text. I'm asking him what does the penny represent in the parable in Matthew chapter 20, verse 2. It says it represents the uh, reward for, of, of the laborers in the vineyard. Whoa, the whole... whoa. It represents a reward. So you get rewarded for your labor. See, I didn't even hear that when I watched it, when I rewatched it last night. But all praise to the most high. See, a lie has to cover up another lie which has to cover up another lie, which has to cover up another lie, man. That's why it's just good to tell the truth. I heard an elder once tell me, I heard an elder once tell me that <clears throat> if you have to lie to somebody, it's because you're scared of them. Side note, 
This is why you brothers shouldn't be lying to your woman unless you're scared of her. Just tell her the truth, man. You know, she respects when you just lay it all out. <laughs> the thing is a parable. Okay, so within the parable, what is the what is the metaphysical point when it talks about the laborers? Who are the laborers? What are they doing? What is the penny? What does it represent? I think it shows us that Christ, as he gives eternity, uh, that it isn't dependent upon our... I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I promise you I'm sorry. It's just funny to me how these Edomites really think they're finna go to heaven, man. It's just, that 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 is funnier than Dave Chappelle's last stand-up, Kings of Comedy, anything Kevin Hart's ever said. I mean, that that... In all in all truthfulness, that is the funniest shit ever. That that these people, the sons of the slave masters, <laughs> really think they're gonna get scot free, clean slate ticket into the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus Christ has already died for them and saved them. <laughs> Works as much as it is our faithfulness. If a person is uh, laboring for just say the last time in his life, say a person. Oh wow! Live streaming. He done monetized it. He done monetized. Can be tricky, and sometimes trying to find the right software. Person is seventy years old before he becomes a, a, a believer. He enters into eternity with the same eternity as the person who has been ministering ever since he was, say, like I like I told you guys, James Snap has a slight speech impediment. So what he's saying is he's basically telling on himself. He's saying the lab, the laborers represent ministers. But if a minister has been preaching since he was 10 years old, or if a minister has been preaching since five years since since five years ago, they get the same reward, which is eternity. So out of his own mouth, the penny represents eternity, which was it's just synonymous with salvation, and the labor represent ministry which is works <laughs> you can't get around that my boy let me rewind that just a little bit like i said a, a believer he enters into eternity with the same eternity as the person who has been ministering ever since he was say 10 years old Okay, there you go. So, so that that's my point. You said ministering is ministering a, a work. That, that's works, right? Ministering can, can be a work. Now he said ministry can be a work. What other ministry? Where's the non? What's the uh, what's a non-work ministry? What what is a non-work ministry? Huh? That's a ministry in vain. That's a ministry that is no, no ministry. Let's keep going. But it's simply a matter of faithfulness. <laughs> okay, faithfulness. One person may be ministering your, all his life for, your... for 50 years. Another may only come to Christ <laughs> late, late in life and say, be, be serving Christ whether in one way or the other, or being faithful for just five years. Or you may even be ministering for five minutes. But can you show your faithfulness without works? In, in some cases oh my god a christian just a christian really does not believe in the bible at all bible says you cannot show your faith without works he says james snap jr the new testament scholar he says there are certain cases where you can show your faith without words <laughs> i mean who's right the lord's brother or you but uh to most people i think that when you become a believer, you recognize that you're not made to do nothing, but you have a way prepared, just like Paul said in the verse I already read, Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship, so we're being made by God to do good works in Christ. The works do not save us, but part of the reason why we've been given a new mission. Here, here's my question to all the Christians in the chat, to all the Christians. All right, now look, I had this written down in my notes too. Damn it. <clears throat> I should have asked him this. I'll be forgetting. I got so many angles, man. Because it's so so many ways. It's like like literally you could kill a Christian with a thousand cuts by the scripture. But I'll be forgetting so many of them. But my question to Christians are <clears throat> if good works can't save you, watch this trick bag, everybody. 
if good works cannot save you, can bad works condemn you to hell? Woo. So with that, with that, with that packaged articulated question, we're going to have a problem here. If good works cannot save you, can bad works keep you from being saved? <laughs> and if you say yes, that opens up a whole can of worms for this whole works-based salvation thing that you guys like to say. <laughs> right, Brother Marcus, message. <laughs> oh, I should have asked him that. Let me rewind it a little bit more. Works in Christ. The works do not save us, but part of the reason why we've been given a new mission means growing in faith. And that means also growing in fruit. Okay, it may be a matter of expressing love. It can be expressing peace. It can be expressing goodness. But yeah. in some ways, we will find a way to convey communicate to all hey so i see a lot of christians in the chat right now guess what christians we'll see if you stick around until this is over when i put that link in the chat and invite you to come on here somebody said i'm still i'm dead spiritually all right well stick around we'll see if you're uh if, if you got the kahunas or not once this is over and i'll put the link in the chat all those around us and shine god's light as his vessels okay so 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 what it what what does it mean? I mean, what does it mean when it says faith without works is dead? It can mean different things to different, different people. <laughs> but I would say that means that if you say you have faith and have no works, what good does it do? God didn't give us faith. God didn't give us the Holy Spirit, so we could do nothing with it. That's good. That's good. I like that. So what about let's back to. I, I don't like it. I'm just trying to pacify and appease so they don't kick me off the channel. That was weak at best. Paul, when it says, do we make void the law through faith? Romans 3 and 31. God forbid we establish the law. Are you establishing the law? And if so, how? Can you give me the verse again? Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Now, this is a good question. I didn't know. Like, like if Hassad is in the chat, Hassad be saying this sometimes. Sometimes you'll train hella hard, right? Like you're finna have a hard fight. Then you'll like slap a nigga with your pinky and he's knocked out. You're like, damn, I trained this hard for this? I'm asking you Romans 3 and 31. We've been bringing that out for 14 years already. And our elders before that. Y'all haven't learned how to lie on that and twist that scripture yet? Do you make void the law through faith? Meaning... You guys are speaking, oh, it's by faith, it's by faith. Well, Paul is saying, do you disregard the law? Do you not keep the law just because we have faith? He said, God forbid, yea, we establish the law. He's like, what verse is that? You should know that. <clears throat> yeah, well, he goes on there to say that Abraham, our father, has found, what has what Abraham found according to the flesh? Because Abraham was there before the law. But both, both Paul and everybody listening to Paul would recognize Abraham as the father of the, of the faithful. And yet, this is before the law was even given. Now, Abraham was living in a time where people were left to kind of grope without any natural, any, any uh, special revelation. Their revelation was natural. But Abraham, with just that much, with what God had revealed, was able to find faith in God. And so that faith was accounted to him as righteousness. Understood, understood. But what law is Paul saying we need to establish? I think I think uh, James refers to the law of liberty. <laughs> Who knows why he's caught? Who knows why he's caught in a pickle right now? Let me show you guys something. Wait, no, no, no. Let me rewind this. Watch this. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. I think I think uh, James refers to the law of liberty. So that what he's saying is is establish the law of liberty. Is that your final final stance? Now look, you see the white boy. Even the white boy at the bottom is laughing. 
because he knows it's about to get bloody. <laughs> now watch this, y'all. Let me tell you. Let me just real quick, real quick, so everybody can see it. Romans 3. Now watch this. I asked him, I said, is that your final stance? I'm trying to show a little bit of mercy because I'm getting older now. So I'm trying to show a little bit of mercy. Now look at this. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. This is the this law right here is the same law right here. So are you mean to tell me, he's saying, do we make void the law of liberty through faith? No, the law of liberty is faith and grace. God forbid we establish the law. <laughs> the whole context here is the Mosaic law. So you can't do that, my man. Let's 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 rewind it just a little bit and then we'll keep going. So like you. Um Stance? Well, that would be one way to say it. I wouldn't say that's the only way. Okay, so it says, do we then make void the law through faith? Faith. What law is he talking about making void here? Uh, to go into detail, we, we'd have to go into the study of Romans. Okay, okay, got you. I'll, I'll just move on. Uh, what's your preferred translation, if you don't mind? Well, uh, lately, I've really... Alan Cupid. Alan Cupid. You should have not have timed him out. People can come in here and express a different opinion. This isn't a fucking cult. Excuse my language. If somebody has a difference of opinion, they can still comment as long as they're not spamming or insulting. All right? So moderators, be a little more merciful with people. They're already scared of us because we're masculine black men and militant... A militant black man, a manly black man is painted out in the world to be a monster. So you got to understand we have to be uh, wise <clears throat> and, and merciful and show the, the loving kindness of Christ and the fruits of the spirit. All right. Because they already look at manly black men as terrorists. Nigga ain't set no crosses on fire, lynch nobody or burn nobody, but we're the terrorists. All right? So let's continue. About making void here. Uh, to go into detail, we, we'd have to go into the study of Romans. Okay, okay, got you. I'll, I'll just move on. Uh, what's your preferred translation, if you don't mind? Well, uh, lately, I've really liked the uh, EOB. I think okay. I have it here somewhere. Yeah, serious. Um, the EOB okay. is, uh, it's probably not familiar to very, very many people in America. But the EOB is <clears throat> the Eastern Orthodox Bible. Now, okay. I'm not Eastern Orthodox. Does anybody in the chat know about Eastern Orthodoxy? If you don't, it's okay. Eastern Orthodoxy is the dominant Christian denomination in the Eastern part of the world, mainly Europe. Uh, and they also have some apocrypha books in their canon, in their Bible. But, you know, that's a different conversation we're talking about Paul and the law. So I didn't want to talk about that, but that's very interesting that his preferred translation is the EOB, the Eastern, Eastern Orthodox Bible, which has those um, deuterocanonical or apocryphal books. But I do like the text <laughs> being used here. I like the number of footnotes, and it's a great Bible for study. The okay. uh, font is rather small, but you can find it online if you look. Okay, so do you do you mind if I use the ESV? Is that is that an issue? I I have that as well. I have okay. another Bible study app. Okay, cool. So my next question is about Paul, and it's about um, look at that bookshelf, guys. All these scholars and and theologians and historians, they got all these books on their shelves, man. And I freaking uh, I probably got like eight books. I got eight books. <laughs> I got the Holy Bible, the Apocrypha. I got 
uh babylon of timbuktu i got uh 101 facts about the negro i got uh some more history i got some native american latino books i had about eight books you know but what does that go to show you guys the making of many books there is no end what we have that trumps all those books is the holy spirit which the holy spirit illuminates your understanding so that you could interpret the scriptures and have the breakdowns that's what we got you understand let's keep going though do you do you agree that paul taught that the law of moses can circumcise your heart well paul taught that the law is good the law is a, a very accurate ruler okay salaki i'm sorry guys i want to cut in every time i'm sorry i'll just keep it going to show how far we've fallen but the law is, is like if it falls to a pit, uh, the law can show us how far we've fallen and how, that we uh, that it's too far for us by what we do to climb out of. Now, I want to mention this for the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, those who are the people of Israel, according to history, archaeology and prophecy. I want to let you guys know something. The reason that the Christian church says the law is done away with and that you don't have to keep it because there's a prophecy that says when the children of Israel collectively keep God's laws, then they will be delivered from the hands of their enemy. And that's, I just want to get that real quick, just a quick side note, because at the end of the day, yes, this white man is getting destroyed theologically, but we have to wake up our people in the midst of destroying these Gentiles, false pseudo white supremacist religion known as Christianity. Deuteronomy 30 says that uh <clears throat> george smith oh my god somebody 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 put george smith in a corner and 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 not not literally because the brother is hilarious <laughs> this dude george smith just said the lies are too heavy for his tongue that's why he's talking like that <laughs> that's why he got a speech impediment george because the lies are too heavy for his tongue. <laughs> oh, I get it. A nigga ain't shit. So Deuteronomy 30 and 1. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. It says, it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. So there's going to come a time where the Israelites will be scattered in exile. Then they will remember who they are because they lost their identity and they will remember that they're under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And then watch this. And shall return to the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. So what, what the laws that the Most High was prescribing to Moses this day which is the Mosaic law, he said, in the end times, we would come back to that law. And then he said that then when we do that, he will turn our captivity. That's the old English phraseology to end our captivity. So I want to let you guys know how important it is for us as the Hebrew Israelites to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, because that is going to bring us liberation. And what's a part of the law, statutes, and commandments? Believing on Christ. That is, um, that is, a. Uh, Deuteronomy 18. Why people keep talking about Lewis? Who the hell is Lewis? Huh? Listen, I don't know who Lewis is. <clears throat> Lewis going to have to wait. We're not interrupting for, for him. So let's continue. Let's continue here. This falls to a pit. Uh, the law can show us how far we've fallen and how that, we, uh, that it's too far for us by what we do to climb out of you see that so basically i'm sorry i lost my train of thought james snap is saying that the law is good to it's an accurate ruler to show us that we can't keep it but the prophecy says that we have to try with all of our heart and soul and strength to keep the mosaic law in order for the israelites to get out of captivity so what you're doing james is setting the israelites up for failure saying that we don't have to keep the law but you know we we the bible says if it was possible the devil would be able to de deceive the very elect and he's not doing a good job at it so okay. the law is good as a ruler so, show us 
and, and lead us to Christ because we, we school didn't master. realize as a schoolmaster. Right? I'm sorry. As a schoolmaster, right? Right. Okay, but so can that my, my, my specific question is is can that schoolmaster circumcise your heart? Uh no. Oh my god. So you guys heard it. Now every Christian is gonna say the law, the mosaic law doesn't circumcise your heart. Every Christian is gonna say that. But I'm gonna show you in the old testament, and then I'm gonna show him in the new testament, because I know they hate the old testament. But I'm gonna show you guys. In the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 10 and 16. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. So, yes, the way you do that, even before Christ and after Christ, is keeping the Mosaic law. It's not a New Testament concept, circumcision of the heart. You see it right here, Deuteronomy 10 and 16. He's telling them, keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That will circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Now, let's go back to the debate. And he's going to get cut with this circumcision of the heart in romans chapter two no okay so do you know what the circumcision so for all these hebrew israelites and and he israelite christians teaching against the law you're teaching against paul you're teaching against christ you're teaching against yahweh the heavenly father isn't that the heart is well if you turn to uh philippians i believe or colossians or no actually it's romans it's romans chapter two and if if I could have uh, Nick to pull it up, I want to start here at verse uh, twenty three. I want to start well, here. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting a phone call. I have this boy. Okay. Well, I guess it either. I think the Illuminati called him. The Illuminati called him and said, "You're on there with the deacon. Get your ass off." <laughs> One of you guys, or we could wait for James. But yeah. if any of you guys are Welcome. familiar, Hello? can I ask Steve Renee being real quiet and patient the whole time? You guys think no. you want to say? Uh, yeah, Renee, uh, yeah. I, yeah, my, my question is is about Romans chapter 2. Um, starting at verse 23, it says, uh, so are you under the um, ideology, worldview or ideology that you know, you don't have to keep the Mosaic law. Or there's no stress to be laid on it. No, there's no. Um, I think uh, that that law is kind of, you know, it's it's talked about in Romans. That law is being fulfilled, bro. Jesus is pretty clear about that. Okay. Yeah, if you if you read in Romans eight, it talks about that that okay. other law. So it's pretty much life. all you guys on the panel, you guys would not you guys would not teach that keeping the Mosaic law can circumcise your heart. Uh, they were no, circumcised what? for real. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now, now, now let's read this. Romans 2 and 23. You who make your boast in the law. What law is this? Bro, why are you that starting at the, verse 23, though? Law. Why why would you start at verse 23 and not read it in context like Romans 1? Like, how are you going to use Romans to say that we have to keep the Mosaic law? Well, well, I didn't say you had to keep it. My specific question was, does Paul teach that it can circumcise your heart if you do keep it? Now, it's uh, up to you if you want your heart right. circumcised or not. And I'm no, with, he doesn't teach that the Mosaic law can circumcise your heart. He teaches that your heart, we have a circumcision of the heart. Okay. Law is written. All uh, right. Nick, everybody heard, heard, with, us, everybody heard but, what but, Nick but, said. Everybody heard what my main man Nick said. So let's let's see. It yeah, says, he doesn't he doesn't teach that the Mosaic law can circumcise your heart. He's telling you that your heart has been circumcised. He's talking about the difference between the old Jewish people who are circumcised in the flesh and how we we're born in the spirit. That's what he's saying. Okay. Okay, well, let's read it then. Let's read it. Uh, let's in read Colossians it. 2, Nick, can I give a word from the Apostle Paul? Because it, it's about my bedtime. But in Colossians, Paul, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. When Paul calls Jesus the head of all rule and authority, that he's clearly saying Christ is beyond Moses. Christ is beyond any prophet. Christ has authority in heaven and on earth. And he says in verse 11, in him also you were circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands. 
and yes, putting sir. off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Yeah, I Having agree with you, If I can continue just a bit more. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, to faith in the power, power working of God, who raised him from the dead. So there, from the Apostle Paul, we see we have received the circumcision when we were baptized. And right. being baptized were part of the family of God. Okay, so I wasn't speaking of the, the, the physical circumcision. I'm definitely speaking about the circumcision of the heart. So I want to start. That's at what Paul's speaking about, who? Okay, cool. Right here, Romans two and twenty three. You who boast in the law, dishonor God. Uh, real quick, real quick. I want to say this. <laughs> this is why. This is why I'm interjecting. Like I said, James Snap Jr. He has a slight speech impediment. Uh, nevertheless, he he's a New Testament scholar. And he does have some good information about textual criticism. But as far as doctrine goes, none of you, I don't give a damn what Christian scholar you are. None of y'all are ready for the Hebrew Israelites who actually are the frontline vanguards of the community. I'm just going to be straight. And pretty much that's the, that's the heads of all the camps. You guys, any, any Christian scholar can't, see the hebrew israelite leadership i mean sakari leadership sons of thunder leadership uh watchman for israel leadership isupk leadership hoi leadership um loi leadership and if i didn't uh, believers of the way leadership none of you christians can deal with any of the leadership none of your christian scholars can deal with any of our hebrew scholars period just can't do it the Bible says the Israelites would know the Bible better than any other group of people. So many scriptures say that. But anyway, what did I stop for? Oh, he ran. I'm asking him about Romans 2. He ran to a whole nother scripture. So he's going to we're going to get into Romans 2 now. By breaking the law. We all agree that this is the Mosaic law, right? Yeah. OK, for it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. For circumcision indeed is a value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. So why is Paul saying if you, when you break God's laws, even if you're circumcised, it's, it's like you have become uncircumcised? Well, you gotta keep. You need reading. to go to Romans. You gotta keep reading the other verses, bro. Okay. Okay. So let's read. Let's keep going. So if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law mm -hmm. will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision so why is paul saying when you keep the law you being uncircumcised it's like you are circumcised not in the flesh but in the heart can you explain that mr nick or james well or if you keep go to, reading go to romans 8 2. romans 8 no, 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 you no. can understand oh. but see here's the, here's the different thing. laws here's the thing. you can't I, we can use proof text, but how can you run from the text that's not that's running? Just keep reading, bro. It says, and if you are, if you're not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who even if written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law. Like he's talking to the Jews who are judging people for not keeping the law, bro. That's okay, basically you know, what you're doing. Verse he's talking to people like you are judging. Okay, people for not keeping then, the law. then I guess Paul is talking. He, he's teaching what I'm teaching. It says he's talking he, to the Jews for judging the Gentiles for not keeping the law. Okay, then break this down, Nick. Then he who is physically uncircumcised but mm -hmm. keeps the law will condemn you. Why? Who, who is the, Who is this person that's physically uncircumcised? For he who is physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you even with your written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law. He's asking it's a question mark. He's asking you a question. Or well, no, not no. <laughs> oh, you Christians are cut so bad. The person who is physically uncircumcised, if he keeps the Mosaic law, it's like he's circumcised and he gets to judge a, a person who's saying they're of the circumcision but are still breaking God's laws. That's how important, that's how important Paul is saying the Mosaic law is. Oh, this is a trick bag. He's in a trick bag. Let's rewind that and keep going. Oh, he's in a trick bag. Transgressor of the law. He's asking it's a question mark. He's asking you a question. Or well, he's no, not there a, no, there's no, yeah. I'm in the ESV. I'm in the ESV and there's okay. no question mark here. This well, is clearly saying 
there's a person who's uncircumcised but is keeping the most. So you're in the law. ESV. I thought you guys. I thought most of the Hebrew Israelites only read the King James. Why are you saying? Well, the ESV? that's just like how most white people think all black people look the same. Don't put me in a box of categorize. So <laughs> that's his way. His way of getting trying to crawl out of the the casket that he's in is to try to say, "Oh, I thought you guys only used the KJV." I use comparative translation, mainly the ancient manuscripts, Greek and Hebrew. If I may, I'm going to have to wrap this up. Uh, okay. <laughs> we can explore various misinter misinterpretations, but I think we've, we've uh, seen, seen the life of Paul, and I think we're getting into a, a different topic entirely. Okay, James, my last question for you. Jesus Christ died for your sins. What did he say? in Luke 10 and 25 on how you get eternal life. Cause I know Paul didn't die for your sins, right? So the person oh. who you believe died for your sins in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, he tells you how to get eternal life. And he says, that's by what's written in the law. Can you explain that on your way out? Sure. When Jesus was asked, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the response was, well, the, the uh, famous passage called the Shira, the, the, the uh, Shira, Shira. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and Amen. love your neighbor as yourself. We and believe we're under a law, bro. We just don't believe we're under the Mosaic law. We're under the law of Christ. And well, so, what, are the laws of, what are the laws of Christ? He tells you, James is telling you right now, love your neighbor with all your heart and love your God as you want to be loved. Oh, so why, didn't Jesus, why didn't Jesus just say keep the Ten Commandments or keep? Oh, the that's the law. only two laws. That's the only two laws you got to keep. According to the New Testament, according to Jesus, yeah. Oh my God, man, a Christian is just the worst. So he doesn't understand that when the Bible says to love your the Lord, it means to keep His commandments. He said all. He said the only commandments you have. The law of Christ is only two laws: love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor. Okay, so what about? being a homosexual what about that and what about these laws here don't commit adultery don't do no murder well one could say that's that's uh uh not loving your neighbor don't steal don't bear false witness honor your mother and father now look love your neighbor as yourself you understand so if that's all we have to keep, you don't even know what it means to love the Lord, which I said it. Let's get it. Let's get back into it. What about what about uh what about um um eating bloody meat? Can you do that? Eating bloody meat. Uh according to Jesus, it doesn't matter what goes in your stomach, but what oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Your heart. Well, oh. In Acts chapter 15, it said you mm -hmm. can't eat food sacrificed yeah, no to idols, so you can't eat that food, and you Dude, can't eat food. You're literally co food. You're quoting Paul who says when you go to a Gentile's, eat, uh, eat what's put on the table. Don't judge no, people by food not, or drink. No, Acts 15 is not Paul. Acts 15 is the council at Jerusalem. It says that they have Paul didn't write from, the book of Acts. No, Luke wrote the book of Acts. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you Christians are done. First of all, Luke wrote Acts, not Paul. And for two, he said, he's saying there's only two laws of Christ to love your neighbor and then love the Lord. Not knowing the Bible says the way you love the Lord is by keeping the commandments, not just saying you love them. But he's talking about you could eat anything. In this council, you can't eat food sacrificed to idols and you can't eat bloody meat. So you're talking about you only got to keep them two commandments. Why are the apostles sanctioning more commandments then? Are they going against Christ? You don't know what the hell you're talking about, my boy. Let's continue. Now, I know James Snap would have never said, because he's actually a New Testament scholar, James Snap would have never said Luke wrote Acts. I'm sorry, Paul wrote Acts. But what he should have did, he should have corrected Nick, is what he should have did. But, you know, Edomites don't care about other, other nations. And a lot of time, Edomites don't care about each other, for real. I mean, just look at Russia invading Ukraine. 
So you can't eat that food, and you Dude, can't eat food. You're literally co food. you're quoting Paul, who says, "When you go to a Gentile's, eat uh, eat what's put on the table. Don't judge no, people by food not, or drink." No, Acts 15 is not Paul. Acts 15 is the Council at Jerusalem. It says that they have Paul didn't write from, the Book of Acts. No, Luke wrote the Book of Acts. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, so are you talking says, about steak, meat, and well? It, it says <laughs> Acts 15 and 20 says you have to abstain from meat offered to idols. So uh, you Nick, have to Nick, okay, you guys, yeah, I think we're getting it. Damn it! This boy is trying to get paid off the deacon. He's trying to get paid off the deacon. The life of Paul. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, sir. James. I'm sorry, yeah, James. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about okay. that. It's just that Nick, Nick welcome, says that, welcome to Hebrew Israelism. Nothing but word salad and out of context garbage. So no, no, Nick. You Nick gotta go. You, you gotta Nick go. says that you only <laughs> have to keep two laws. So he just. I don't it. say that, bro. Oh, that's simple. what. That's what James says. That's what Paul says. That's what Jesus says. If you want to keep all six hundred thirteen mosaic then laws, why is there a count on Acts fifteen? Why is there a count on Acts fifteen, Nick? Can you just answer that? Why don't, you, why don't you run off and go have another Passover in a strip club with all your buddies? Oh, and in a strip club. Your... You see that? You see that? You Christians are so evil. When you're getting owned in the scriptures, <laughs> you start bringing out lies. Now we had a Passover in a strip club. You see that? The devil is all cool and respectful till they start getting backed in the corner. Then it's lies and slander, and they, and they start showing their horns. You know, but what I did as a man of God, I didn't fight fire with fire. You know what I mean? I just called it what it was. You're a liar, but Christians don't keep the law of God. So, I mean, what the hell is wrong with lying? You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going. Be a so you're gonna lie on us just like I'm gonna lie. You want me to bring up? You want me to bring up the video? We all saw it, We all saw you. You want me to bring up the video of you in the strip club under Passover? I have. Aren't you married to a white woman, Haka? Aren't you married to a white woman? Now I'm married to a white woman. Look, these are all Christians. They don't have any problem with lying. They don't have no problem with lying. Why? Because of the imputed righteousness of Christ. That means you can lie and be evil and wicked as long as you believe in Christ, the man that was perfect. Now you get his some of his righteousness, but you can keep on being a liar. It's all good though, you know? I held it down like an anchor. Let's keep going. Yeah, aren't you married to, like aren't a, you married to hey, aren't you married to a white woman, bro? Absolutely is that okay? not. No, I'm not. That's know. two lies that you guys untold on me, but it's okay because mm. you're Christians. And you're it, bro, lie. you said it on one of your live streams, dude. Some some Christian guy was talking. Don't, don't start calling us a liar, man. You're the biggest liar here. Yeah, we bring that video up. Let yeah. me talk to J-Man. Let me talk to J-Man. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I know you guys are cave beasts. Hey, let's hey, thanks for coming, James. See, unless you want to stay okay, and listen let's to get some calm. Let's get trash. Some calm. I it, know sometimes it's hard for cave beasts. I do have to be going. Yeah, well, thanks for coming, James. Thanks, James. Okay. Appreciate it. I know Have sometimes night, it's man. hard for, for Caucasian to, to show some. <laughs> why do you love keep bringing up? Hey, why do you keep bringing up the race card? Because that's all you do when you get owned no, in the scripture. Not. You run to the race yourself, card and you scream racism, right? So wrong, mm. Nick. How, how yeah. can I respect you when you lied and said we were in okay, a Okay, I don't. I don't respect, respect you either, bro. Uh, I don't have to okay, so why would I respect somebody that lied? Can I give you a word of prayer before we go? James, James. Before I was really interrupted by that peckerwood, Nick, can you please explain to me Luke uh, <laughs> chapter 10? You explain it. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was probably the greatest part of the video. Now, one thing I like about this individual, this individual, uh, his name is Renee. His name is Renee. I like this guy. Every time I say something funny or, or uh, an insult at Nick, I see Renee, he got this smile and smirk on his face. Let me rewind that. James, James, before I was really interrupted by that peckerwood, Nick, can you please explain to me Luke uh, chapter 10? You explain it, not him. He wants to pray, so you can either shut your mouth or leave and let him pray. Oh, he's mad. He's mad. James wants to say his ending prayer, so I could either shut my mouth or Nick is mad. Nick, I know you're mad, man. I know you really hate 
the fact that I came on your show and just took it over. Let me do both. Uh, we're you, told you, by, by Jesus to inherit eternal life, you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's plan A. But when you think about it, nobody does that. Nobody. So basically, he's saying Christ told us that we get saved by keeping the law, but nobody can do it. I need any Christian in the chat to explain, give me any other way that Christ said you are to be saved. Matthew 19, he said, keep the commandments. Luke 10, he said, it's in the, eternal life is in the law of Moses. In the book of Revelation, which there's red letter in there, it says, these are they which keep the commandments and have faith in the Messiah. Somebody show me any other way. And if you say, oh, well, he's the door. Yes, he is the door, but he's a part of the law. So believing on him is keeping the law. Deuteronomy 18, Numbers 24, Genesis 49. He has loved the Lord of the God with all the heart, <clears throat> all the mind, all the soul, all the strength, 100%. And that's why we need Jesus to enter the picture. The perfect dying for the imperfect. And the one who believes on Jesus even though his works, on the, the sinner's works, do not have merit, the work of Christ on the cross did have merit. That, that's why he saves us, by his grace, by his gift, empowering us to live for him. And as we live for him, we will then pursue his will. Okay. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening when we could look at the life of your servant Paul. He was said that was said. Let me, let me, let me, let me just fast forward this, this prayer, this Catholic prayer. What's your Paul, name? I'm sorry. Uh, maybe it would be a good idea not to use insults. Yeah, thank you. Please tell Nick that. Okay. What's Bye. going on? Hey, what's going on? What's your name? Uh, uh, future slave master. No, what's your name? I'm, my name's Renee. The Deacon Renee. De uh, say it again. The Deacon. Just yeah. The deacon? So, so my, yeah, my 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 only sentiments are in Luke ten and twenty five. He says, "What should I do to inherit eternal life?" Christ asks him, "What is written in the law of Moses? Love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor." So uh, my question, and then you can ask me a question, is what is the biblical definition of love and how you love God? How do you show your love for God according to the Bible? He shows us, he shows us by some works. <laughs> you know, he says, uh, uh, if you love me, for this you is the love my of God. Commands. Yeah, if, if, for this is the love of God that we keep the commandments, 1 John yeah. 5 and 3. So uh, what I think, is, I think you might, I don't, I mean, when we were reading uh, Romans 2, and you were talking about that law. That law right there was talking about Moses' commandments. But if you go like if you go further to Romans 8, <clears throat> then we start to recognize the difference between the spiritual law and a, again and that fleshly law. That that law that was given to Moses was for, you know, sinners. So when we are in Christ, that's when we no longer sin or we try not to longer no longer sin if we walk in the spirit so if you go to <laughs> what? wait what christians are the big christians are the biggest admitters of how sinful they are we're sinners we're wretched what do you mean christians no longer sin excuse me romans um 8 2 it tells you for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death so you need to what's know the, the law, difference between what's those. The law, what's the law of the spirit and what's the law of sin and death? So when we when we read the, the fruits of the spirit, we know that you know love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, good goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there's no law. So when we're walking in the spirit, there's no law to us because we're not gonna do anything that is gonna be, you know, under the like we're not gonna sin. We're not gonna You're not gonna sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. All you Christians are shaving your beard, eating pork, celebrating pagan holidays, eating food, sacrificed to idols, marrying gay people, doing drugs, uh, um, 
not keeping God's feast days, that's all transgression, breaking God's laws. And don't walk wrong. So <clears throat> if we're in the spirit, we walk correctly. And it's a choice, just like Jesus had a choice to... to so is, the know, law, is the law spiritual is what I'm asking you? Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it's the law of sin. Uh, where it tells you, I mean, in Romans, it talks about walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. So right. he's talking about the spiritual law. So when you're in Romans 2, he's talking about law, the fleshly you know? law. What is the spiritual law? Walking in the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, goodness, okay. goodness and self-control. So like so, even the Samaritan, right? Even the Samaritan, you're asking about. Um, but about before, uh, before the Samaritan, in Romans 7 and 14, Paul says that the law is spiritual. The Mosaic law. So is the mosaic law, do you agree with the text? Uh, well, let's go there. Let, well, you know what, let's read it because, you know, I don't want to be wrong. Let's go. Yeah, Romans Jesus. 7 and 14. What he's, was, what he's attempting to do is go to Romans 8 where it says the law of sin and the law of the spirit. And he's trying to say that the mosaic law is the law of sin and the law of death. No, that's your fleshly members and your nature that is so prone to do wrong. And the law of the spirit is the mosaic law as he mentions Paul in Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> Romans 7 and 14. Hey, what happened, J Man? Did, did you scare him away there? He, he prayed out. He's good. He, 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 did, <laughs> he did what we call a hit and run. Oh, okay. He came out here and lied on me, then left like a coward. Uh, I had to take a leak. I didn't hear what went down. But I appreciate you, Renee, for, for answering this. Now, I got one last question. And okay, so no, yeah, right there. He's saying we know that the law is spiritual. So he's talking about the spiritual law. He's not talking about the carnal law. That's why that's why he's he's talking about he says, For we know the law, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So like there's a the verse that that the Mosaic law, the Moses law, that law is for sinners. It's not for people who are in Christ. It's not for it's not for the spiritual. It's like they don't you're, you're not supposed to sin when you're in the spirit. What is sin? What is sin according to the Bible? There's a lot of things that are sin. Anything that is, you know, and just it says the transgression of the law, but then in the Bible it also says that the law was or sin was around before the law existed. So I mean, which one is it? Right? Well, sin entered the world before the Mosaic law existed, but there was always oral tradition before it was codified. Mm. So as far as sin in this dispensation or in this covenant that we're under, is gonna have to be breaking Mosaic law. So Paul said, I would not know sin, but by the law. So if the law is done away with, how is Nick committing any sin? How is it? Can you give me a, the, an example of how you could commit sin if the law is done away with? Like, like name some sins. Well, first of all, dude, I don't think the law is done away with. Like as Gentile the Christians, flesh? as Gentile Christians, we believe we're under a law, just not the Mosaic law. Like that's why Jesus said, not one dog tittle will pass until all things have been completed or all things have been fulfilled. And that's what Jesus did when he came. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled for everything in the law, but there's prophecies in the law that <laughs> haven't came to pass yet. So how do well, you I don't claim to know everything or have all the answers, bro. But when Jesus says that, like, he came to fulfill, and I believe when he died on the cross, that's what he did was fulfill. And as a Gentile Christian, I'm under the new covenant. If you want to live under the old covenant or whatever you, you Hebrew Israelites live by, that's fine, bro. But that's just not uh, well, the way. If, the, if, if, if the new covenant started at the death of Christ, then why are the apostles committing animal sacrifice and still not eating unclean uh, because after, decades after Christ died. And oh, they were all Jews, bro. They were all Jews that read and lived by the Old Testament. I don't know. I, I don't claim to have all the answers. Okay. So as far as Gentiles, are Gentiles equal to ethnic Israelites? Because the Bible says, yeah. Just, is, is yeah, that, they, they are, are, but not according to you, obviously. Not according okay. to you, black people are superior above all races, right? So can you be can you be a part of the 144,000 since you could be equal to ethnic? No, Israelites? I can't, and neither can you, because unless you're a virgin and a Jew, I don't think you can be part of the 144,000. Well, the 144 in Revelation 7, it didn't mm -hmm. say they were virgins. That's Revelation yeah, does, bro. No, that's Revelation 14. I'm talking about okay. Revelation 7. So, Revelation 7. Can a Gentile be a part of the 144,000? No, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't okay, want to be so part how of do you, How would you say that a Gentile has equal rights to an ethnic believer? Because it literally says there's not one Jew, not there, everyone is here, not bond, no free word, no Jew. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Like, we're all one. Okay, even if it is one body, I'm asking mm -hmm. you, is there stratification within that body, within that system? And no, clearly you say, yes, I don't think there is. 
You can't be a part of 144. You can't be. Bro. Christ gave Why? the 12 disciples. He said, let me just say this and I'll give it to you. Right, sure, yeah. So 144,000, they're all Israelites. Matthew okay. 19, 28, he said the 12 apostles are going to get 12 thrones. Uh, 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 Michael 4, it says the Israelites will be judging the world. It says uh -huh. the saints will be judging the world. So why is why are all those perks coming to the ethnic Israelites and not the believing Gentiles? I don't know. Maybe because they're... Why did Jesus decide to come? He could have come into any race, any nation. Why did he decide to come in? Jesus could have came from any race or any... Jesus could have came and been born from any race and any nation. Okay, watch this show. <clears throat> Romans 9 and 5. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are their ancestors, and Christ himself was an Israelite as far as human nature is concerned. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ. It was prophesied that Christ could only come through the loins of Abraham's seed. So, no, he couldn't have came as any other race. <laughs> uh, let me just rewind it a little bit more. Why are all those perks coming to the ethnic Israelites and not the believing Gentiles? I don't know. Maybe because they're... Why did Jesus decide to come? He could have come into any race, any nation. Why did he decide to come into Israel? I don't know. They obviously hold a special well, place in God. Promised. No, it was promised that he would come through the seeds of Abraham. But like, what proof do you have that you are a Hebrew Israelite? Why don't we start there at the very beginning? Well, that's, I have so much proof. I have, there, like, I have DNA proof. I have archaeological proof. DNA I have proof. proof. I got you trust DNA the DNA proof? proof? I don't trust the DNA proof, but that's what a lot of people bank on. But you know, we can provide that. We can provide history, archaeology, and prophecy. The Bible says I think that they have to have the original gene to do anything for every nation. They have to have the Rick, original gene. To hey, do Renee, that. I agree with you. I agree with you. DNA is a flawed science, but in some yeah, aspects, so. in some, and it's a pseudoscience as well. But we still could use some of that science, even though it's not foolproof, to prove. Well, I think they're lying. That's well, just, that's just what I'm saying. My, my 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 last question is to Nick and Renee. Revelation 2 and 26, it says, he that overcometh will I give power over the nations. Do you guys want power over the other nations? No, I don't care, bro. I need so you don't you. want the promise, of, you don't want the promise of Christ. This will let you it's given to us, believe. it's just given to us and we do what we do, you know? It's not like- Hebrew Israelism is such a prideful philosophy. It's so great, like gratification of yourself. Like, just, why can't no, you I'm just- asking. Nick, subtract me Yo. from the equation. Subtract oh, me from the equation. Not just, dude, just all of this new Hebrew Israelite movement. Like, why can't you just love God and be happy and worship him? Why are you so concerned with like being above people and being the chosen ones? And you guys hear that? That is so anti-Semitic. It's so anti-Semitic. We're in a prideful philosophy because the book says that the Israelites are above all people and God's special chosen people. And when we say that, it's a prideful philosophy. But let the people who you think are Jews, those blue-eyed, blonde-haired, white people in Israel, let's if, if they talk like that, the world wouldn't care. But because we, you guys, look at us as the disenfranchised, marginalized, disproportioned, and oppressed, vexed and perplexed, destitute, and, and just at the bottom of Sodom, we could never have any racial empowerment. Because you want us to be nothing but slaves. First Peter 2 and 9. First Peter two and nine. It's such a prideful philosophy. Well, you got to be mad at God that he said the Israelites are his special people. First Peter two and nine. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that he may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is echoed in the New Testament, predicated on the Old Testament. We're always going to be God's chosen people, whether you guys with your anti-Semitic asses like it or not. Like, I don't get it. I just, because I you guys ain't putting no respect on God's chosen people. That's why. 
But there's no actual proof that you are God's chosen people. Like, clearly, gay. black people are from Africa, dude, not Israel. Oh, there's white people from Africa. What are you talking about? White people from yes, Africa. South Africans. Have you ever That's heard of the Afrikaners? Yeah, I know people from South Africa personally. Okay, there's, Moroccans, not... there's Moroccans in North Africa. They're not the same. Everybody on one continent don't mean they're the same. You should know that. Where did South African white people come from, though? You can trace it back. They're not very old. You tell me where they came from. Well, they migrated there from places like England and New Zealand and stuff. They weren't born in on the where continent of Africa. <laughs> where is so the do you have another book? Where did the white man originate from? Europe. I don't know. Europe. Not okay. a historian. Nick. Where does the black man originate from? Not Israel. That's for sure. Nick. First of all, every every scientist would agree that all life started in the Levant or middle. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree Africa with you too. Or or fed, uh, fertile crescent. So yeah, I agree. We don't, we don't even believe that white people are from Europe. White people are. We don't well, even not originally, dude. Not, not if you're talking the very first humans, like way, 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 way back. But I mean, there's enough historical and archaeological evidence to show that white people have been in Europe for a long, long time. And you could say the same thing about black people being from Africa. Okay, well, you know, that's it. That's a. My last question is: Is do you want what Christ is promising you to rule over other nations? Uh, no, I, don't. I wouldn't give up a bowl of soup. I mean, I wouldn't give up uh, that for a bowl of soup. Like, as long as I go with the love of no God and the love of Jesus, dude, I don't need to rule over people. Like, I really am not concerned with that. Okay, well, I guess you don't want his promise because he also said the one will rule over them with the iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery. <laughs> and so I'm just hoping you're... this to show you that you guys are not Christians because you don't even want what Christ is promising to the believers. Mm, guess not, bro. And you're Christ not in Israel. Subject hey, Haka, I'm here, Haka. Damon, can you at least answer that for me? Because we're not going to go with the lies and the slander. Let's deal with doctrine. Revelation. I'm not a Christian like you're That's not fine. That's fine. As, as long as you're really, as long as you're willing to read chapters. Okay, cool. My, we can read the whole Revelation chapter two. I'm just asking: is the is the is the Gentile believer Christian ready to get the promise of Christ to rule over other nations and beat the hell out of them? Because I know I am ready. <laughs> wow. Is that what you're that not means? a believer though? That's what you want is to beat the hell out of people and rule over them. Oh, that's what, that's what and that just proves you don't want the you don't want the promises of Christ. So Jesus was like, Yeah, man, you're gonna roll over people and beat the shit out of them, man. That's why I can <laughs> these guys don't believe in who the world calls Jesus, man. I ask Christians this all the time. Do you want the promises of Christ? They say yes. So I say, Okay, well, let me tell you, let me take you to one of the promises of Christ. Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> Verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. That's what you get. You get power over the nations. And he, the one who overcomes, shall rule them with a rod of iron. What are you going to do with that rod? As the vessels of a potter, shall they, the nations who you have power over, be broken to shivers? Do you want what Christ is promising? No, you Christians don't. You don't know what the hell, you don't know, you don't serve the biblical Jesus. You serve Caesar Bogier, the European westernized homosexual Jesus Christ. That's who you guys serve. All Christians serve that Jesus, not the biblical Jesus. They disagree with the text, as we call it. Okay, can one of you three, before I go exegete Romans chapter 2, 26? I meant to say Revelation, but whatever. 28, please. The floor is yours. Yeah, two laws right there. The Gentiles kept it in the spirit, and they actually just kept it because it was in their heart. If you go back to Romans, uh, to, I think, 2.14, oh, no, it to you right sorry. there. That was Revelation yeah. chapter 2. Not yeah, Revelation 2. If you start a little bit earlier than the yeah. verses you actually explained, the Gentiles actually kept it without even having the law. They won't, dude. This is how they operate. Revelation, Renee, Revelation 2, not Romans 2. Sorry. Do you think any of us will look back? Uh, sorry. Oh, Romans 2. Oh, okay. Uh, not, Revelation not Romans 2, Revelation 2. My bad. Okay, so Revelation 2 where it says that uh, we're going to get to have... 26 to 28, yeah. 
Well, let's all read it. You, you can let's put read it two up. verses out of chapter two, man. That proves everything. <laughs> Why? Why know, do you guys always operate like that? Nick, Nick, I know <laughs> the whole book of Revelations. In Revelation, not one, very well. in Revelation 1, he's talking about yeah. the seven churches. In Revelation Roman. 2, he's talking, talking about Roman. the seven churches. Oh, very familiar, Nick. You remember how Roman. I came on here and sons you and Joe Wyrasek? You remember that? Glass oh, really? Joe? You remember Glass? Oh, yeah, Glass Joe, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Dude, I got no problem with you. I don't I don't take this stuff very serious. Like, I don't want to rule over people. Like, I love Jesus, and that's about it. Like, I don't okay. know. Well, if you're a saint, if you're a saint, oh, the Bible well, says the saints are going to take these other nations in chains. Uh -huh. So do you still want to be a saint when it's time to uh, Nick? Let's not let's not lie here, Nick. You come from right. the you come from the Caucasian persuasion. Yeah, you, know, you guys are used to going everywhere and forcing your democracy and philosophy, then dropping bombs oh, and, 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 and enslaving every oh, other region. That's right, and that's the thing too. A lot of white Christians they probably do believe they're going to get power over the nations because they're already doing it right now. They're used to that. They're used to infringing and invading and committing genocide on melanated people they're used to that so this whole covert racism here that oh we don't want power over the people but you already have power over the other nations and you want to keep that power i ain't seen no white man um expunge their white privilege or white supremacy yet they love benefiting from their white privilege and white supremacy it's not white, so yeah, okay. Funny, you're fine. Have you seen the history of what Africans have done to their own people, bro? Do you know your own history? Or wait, you're not African, you're Israeli, right? <laughs> Listen, I'll even entertain this, I'll even entertain your 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 false assumption that I'm you do know white people were slaves too, right? Oh, no, let, let's, let's, you just, guys. let's just entertain what you just said. So show me one nation of people who have been taken in hardcore slavery from one point of the world to the other. By the hundreds of millions for 500 years and got their language beat out of them, their religion beat out of them, and have their slave master's name and slave master's language, the floor and laws and constitution. Hundreds of millions? Yes. There's only like 300 million people in the entire United States, and the country's only like two or 300 years old. So how, how did we do it from the inception of the transatlantic slave trade? What about the what about the white slave trade, the Arab slave trade? Why is it only the African American give slave trade? Give me one. Give me one, give me the name of one white slave trade. The white slave trade didn't even end officially until like 1920 in Paris, dude. Name it. Got name, slaves it. Today. name it. What's it called? White Chinese black. Uh, no, no. Like it's probably on Wikipedia. Actually, he's got to Google it. He's got to Google it. Let him Google it. Well, we I know. I don't research this shit all day. Like, I don't care, dude. My, I wasn't a slave. My granddad wasn't a slave. My parents were a slave. Like, how, like, do you are know you, any are slaves? You British? Are you British, Irish, Scottish? Yeah, yeah. So if you're British, then your ancestors had a major part in the slave trade. Okay. Maybe my great, great, great granddad or something. But, like, I, I like, don't yeah. know what. Oh, so you got it. The Nick. Bible says, Nick. prepare well, slaughter. Nick, give me a favor, Nick. Prepare slaughter Nick. for the... All you have to do, Nick, all you have to do is Google history of slavery. Yeah, yeah. There's a ahead. website called Free the Slaves. Do it. it it'll tell you the history of it. Yeah. Show me 500 like, years and 200 million deaths. Go ahead. Uh, okay, bro. Like, there's been white slavery, too. Like, this is, I guess you don't believe Wikipedia. White Prove slavery. It. White slavery. Prove also it. known as the white slave trade. Yeah, let's look at it. Nick, Nick, what? Do, do what I'm telling you, Nick. Look up history of slavery. There's okay. a website called Free of the Slaves. But under Muslim rule, the Arab slave trades that include Caucasian captives were often fueled like, dude, you think black people were the only oh, slaves? Like, I, I didn't say that. I said a 500 year. What do you want me to look up, David? 500 year, 200 million genocide. Yeah. Still subjugated to the state. <laughs> okay. What's the website, Jamin? What's the website? Look up Free the Slaves. Or just history of slavery. History of slavery? Yeah, history of slavery. Yeah. Google. He has no books. He has no sources. He's got to Google. Oh, you don't Google. I bet you'd use Google if it was in your no, in your really benefit, not a right? truth, man. I see more black on black crime. Yeah. Haka, how, 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 is not, how is it not a source, Haka, when, it, the, when the site is literally called Free the Slaves? Oh, is it is it dot that's edu? stupid come on man is it dot edu is it dot org but jay man you said you see uh, more right. black on black 
crime than what? No, that was Renee. I see, I see that, yeah. I, see, I never I see a lot of hatred. Like, no, I, I Who see Who do you that, think like, got the black slaves for the white people, dude? It was other black tribes there that went and captured other Nick, black Nick, people. Yeah, Nick, like, let's make a bet. Like Nick, Africa. let's make a hundred dollar bet in front of everybody. I can guarantee you that the uh, first uh, time we were kidnapped from West Africa was Prince Henry of Portugal in 1441. Let's let's do it right now. Hundred dollars cash. Betting because you obviously looked and researched this, and I don't even know. So why would okay, I bet you that? Making, stop making false claims. Then. Are you even allowed to bet as like a chosen Hebrew Israelite? Yes. Is that you're allowed yes. to bet? Yes, oh, we can bet. Okay. Nice. Okay, freetheslaves.net. Is that okay, or is .net not allowed? I, I don't, just go ahead. My point. I never said there was no other slavery. I said there was no other slavery like this one. This one, Jamin. Change the condition. Yep. What am I looking for here? Uh, that's why I told you to to Google it. Um, it is free the slaves. Free the slaves. Jamin, Jamin, just let me know this. Are you saying that I'm not saying nobody went to slavery, but are you saying there's any comparable slavery to ours? Yeah, there is. Okay, well, why, 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 there is. why wouldn't there? Why that's yeah. stupid. All right, show me, show me, show me, show me 200 million of yeah. them taking a world away from their home. And Where do you get the numbers million. 200 million, bro? I'm factoring in who we believe to be the Israelites, which are oh. the, the, Latinos, the Latinos, Native Americans, oh. and the, the, the Negroes. But even if we oh. stick with just the Negroes, even if we st stick with just the Negroes, tens mm. of okay. millions, tens of millions, 500 years a genocide, and they speak their slave masters language and have their slave master's name ready set go show me the the thing is how, how do you know you're israel though listen yeah, you're I, not, I said, there's no proof at all get it whether you're i'm a fraud, fraud no no hold on hold on no no no, no. I'm, I'm going somewhere i'm going somewhere I'm no like yeah, okay. how, how do you know you're israel like i mean yeah, is, is it by your father okay jamie let me speak first of all nick won't even hold on, i'm gonna answer the question man is, is it is it by your father but you guys are trying to go. To a come on, man! I, I I see I see how you do it on your show. So come on. We're not straw oh, man, dude. Jay, Jay, man, listen to listen. You oh, guys, oh, oh, come on. I mean, answer the question, man. I mean, come on. Now you're no. on somebody else's platform. Come no, on, it's man. No, it's a straw man oh. now because he won't answer. No, he can't answer his no I'm going to answer that. Yeah, answer. I I mean, he he knows. You know, I mean, is it by who your is it if your father's Jay, an Israelite? Does that make you an Israelite? Jay, man, let me say this before I answer. Answer that. the question, dude. Come on, you're you're like jumping and jiving and all this stuff. Come on. Jay, man, before I answer that, you guys are not going to answer what That's the whole thing. You're going to do, though, Jay, man. Why are you running, bro? Me. Why are you running? Why are you running? Jay, man. You you guys come, on, man. Me. come on, man. Come on, man. What do you mean I'm trying to straw man you? It's a simple question. You believe you're, you're believer in Israelite by who your father is, right? Yeah. They're supposed to be showing me any other slave trade like ours. Because that's why we believe we're the Israelites for that horrible slavery that was a prophetic event in the bible and now it's going somewhere else but it's almost done and then i'm gonna open it i'm gonna, I'm gonna open the floor up yes okay so you believe that the israelites are the ones that were in the transatlantic slave trade correct yes <laughs> okay that's a simple i mean come on man okay, okay so how do you know you're not white you, okay but I'm so how do you know you're not white <laughs> because i trace my father's lineage that's how i know now, um, the thing is, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because now you're trying to run now. The thing is that most of the people that were there, their parents <laughs> were <laughs> white. <laughs> he said most of the slaves had white daddies. This nigga's crazy. Now, you guys won't believe it, but J-Man is an Oreo. He's a uh, white man trapped in a black man's body. Because of the dude, Prove come it. on, dude. Are you pull serious? Up pull up the source now. Pull it come up. Come on, man. man. Everybody pull knows up. the history, man. Dude, don't even so start, dude. Everybody pull knows the history. Source. Look pull at this dude source. running. Because he knows it's true. I'm telling him to pull up a source showing that most of the slaves have white daddies. Are you dumb? Pull up the source. White them, he's like so what bad about, about it. Pull up the source, yeah, dude. He, he knows he's an eat him. He's a Prove black over eating my Prove it. Side, you, bro. Come on, man. Dead. Prove it. I got another hundred dollars for Jay, man. If he can uh -huh. prove both of the slaves got <laughs> white dude, ever pay that. Oh, whatever, dude. Come on, dude. You, you, you ahead, know, bro. You Go know, ahead. man. This, this is the whole thing. I will stay here for a whole hour if you can prove that stupid ass shit you just all you have to do is Google it. He doesn't trust Google. This clown is crazy. Now, oh, of, course, of course he doesn't trust Google, dude. 
Show of me. course he doesn't trust Google. Hey man, continue showing me. This dude is this dude is running, and y'all can see him running. I gotta go. Damn. He just abruptly cut off the chat. Anyway, let me open it up for questions, comments, and smoke. Because I see we got some Christians in the chat. I just want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh for that flawless victory. He gets the praise, honor, and glory for that. But anyway, I got the link in the chat. I see there's a lot of Christians in here. Let's keep the fight going. Let's keep the fights going. Theological fades. We catching theological phase. Look at J Man. J Man's in here right now. J Man, click the link, man. You got to show everybody the source that says most of slaves have white daddies. <laughs> let's get that. Let's get that source. I still got a hundred dollars for you. I'll raise it to to one fifty if you can provide that source. All right, we got the link in the chat. Let's see if J Man is more of a man than his mommy, and if he's gonna click the link. All praises. Let's go. Let's get this smoke popping in the spirit and power. Call hello, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. Mic check, mic check. Yo, we good? We good? Shalom, what's going on, King? What's up, fam? Talk to me. Hey, real quick, man. Just a couple things I'm trying to clear up. It ain't no go ahead. Smoke for real. Like I said, Hassan and Chief know me. They didn't even let me in the building. Um, all right. We all on the same page on Matthew 4 and 4, right? Every word of the book, every word yeah. of the book matters, right? Yeah. We on the same page about 2 Peter 2 and 20. You're kind of muffled, bro. You might have your you finger it? on your mic. There you go. Got you. My bad. We on the same page on 2 Peter 2 and 21 about it's not a surprising interpretation, right? Right, go ahead. Cool. So, um, do you guys pray with your head covered? Do we pray with our head covered? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Well, some brothers do, some brothers don't. That's what what's I'll say. The, what's the um? Cause I, what's the genuine explanation for how you guys explain First Corinthians eleven and four how prophesizing? And we go to Blue Letter talks about teaching and tradition and being prophet. So. I think that's pretty plain. So I'm trying to understand where y'all go to. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me just show you. Let me show you real quick. Appreciate First it. and foremost, um, sin is the transgression of the law. That's what a lot of Hebrew Israelites don't understand. And they Romans get, 6 and 23. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, they try to go to Romans. I'm sorry, uh, Paul, to make his officials like law, right? Mm -hmm. Now, with that same, for a lot of brothers who say <clears> it's wrong to teach with your head covered, you would have to say it's wrong. To have long hair, but John the Baptist was a Nazarite. Uh, oh, we're not even gonna, we're not even gonna go there. We're on the same page on that. I'm just strictly talking yeah. about praying and prophesying. Okay, Those gotcha, two gotcha. words. Those so two words. First Corinthians eleven. Right. When you look at the word for covered in the Greek, it's a uh -huh. veil. For one, it's not a new era starter hat. And then if you go mm -hmm. down to verse sixteen, look what it says. Mm -hmm. But if any man seem to be contentious, meaning if anybody wants to debate if you mm -hmm. should have your head covered or not, look what he says. He said, we have no such custom, neither the other churches of God. Meaning it's a it's a custom at Corinth, at the church of Corinth. It's a Greek custom. If you, even if you look at the historical references. You, you echoing, bro. You echoing, bro. You echoing, bro. Yeah, I'm going to mute you then real quick. Even when you look at the historical references and commentary, it, it says it's a Greek custom, not a law. But go ahead. I'm going to put another link in the chat because I see other people asking for the link. What's your next question, King? Or your I, can't, rebuttal? I can't even hear you. I don't know what you said, but are you saying that 1 Corinthians 11 and 4 is a Greek custom? That's what you said? Yeah, it was a Greek custom at Corinth and is dealing with a veil. A veil. All right, cool. Next question. So the book of Hebrews, do you, um, do you feel like it's uh, equal to every other book in the Bible or you feel like it's so well, when, you, when we deal with the authoritative text, uh -huh. it's thus saith the Lord, it's uh, -huh. uh the words of Yahweh Shai, that's Deuteronomy 18 and 18, and anything else that speaks <clears throat> to the law and to the to the testimony. So, yes, we deal with the book of Hebrews. Okay, because I you know that's why I started with we were on the same page about the volume of the book. 
Yeah, but that doesn't mean that there's that doesn't mean that you won't <clears throat> find some uh errors or variants within the books. Some errors. Yes. Oh, hold on now. What's Second Timothy three and sixteen say real quick? Okay, so let me just show you one and maybe maybe you'll understand. So what's second second Timothy three and sixteen real quick, I think. Yeah, second Timothy three and sixteen. Right. What all, is scripture, all scripture is given for what? Inspiration of who? Yeah, and it's profitable. It is profitable. And, but some scripture is for profit. Some scripture is for inspiration. Some scripture mm -hmm. is for reproof. Some scripture is for correction. Some scripture scripture is for instruction. So mm -hmm. if you if you don't understand that there are some errors within the translation or manuscript, you're 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 acting like a blind Christian. For one, I'm gonna tell you why. But I ain't no blind this Christian, says, bro. Hold on, we can, I'm, talking, we can calm I'm, down. Talking, I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking. Now, so when the Bible says Easter, or if the Bible says King Solomon had 3,300 chariots, and then in Chronicles it says he had 6,000 chariots. Is that a translational error or a manuscriptual error? Yes or no? And I can find at least a hundred of those right now. Bro, I know I know you're a scholar and all that. I don't know. Have a good night, my nigga. Bye. Shalom, brother. What's going on, King? Hey, Shalom, Wabaru King. Uh yeah, man. Uh I want J Man to come in here with this uh with that nonsense. And I got <laughs> I got five hundred on it. I, yeah. I, I want them to bring it and show uh, because they always look at uh, at a real brother like me and like you, and they'll say, "Oh, you you uh, you got uh, you got got," <clears throat> and I beg to differ because um, uh, I know you did your DNA. I hadn't done mine just yet, but I will say this: I done met um, women uh, sisters from uh, Somalia, even. Uh, the Bantu uh, sisters, and um, she's the same color as me. She's a red sister just like I am, and ain't never uh, been enslaved to no white man. She they was enslaved to the Somalians, to the uh, skinny Somalians. So uh, how in the world is it that just because of, uh, a so-called Negro got red skin, like Dawid, how in the heck is, uh, how in the heck is uh, that equate to him being uh, somehow the descendant of a so-called white man. Mm -hmm. uh, I want G-Man to bring his, uh, J whatever his name is, hey, he can bring hey his up. Hey, man, that's $600. I got 100 yeah. he got 500 I got 500 on it. Come show it. Come bring the proof. J-Man, you got to come get this bread, brother. You talking about most black slaves had white daddies. Come get this $600, boy. Clown. Clown. All right, King, let me get some more of these brothers on here. All right, Doc. All right, Shalom, God. Come on. Shalom, King. What's going on, brother Shamar? Going good, going good. <clears throat> I just got a quick question about this one verse that I know I've been talking to a lot of Christians, like you know, for the past couple of weeks or so and everything. And one verse they use in particular, they use Matthew 8 and uh I think 8 and 10, where it talks about how Israel, there was no faith in Israel and how he healed. I think he went to a centurion and everything. So I wanted to see like how how do you like deal with that verse when dealing with Christians? Well, let's look at it. Matthew 8 and 10. Matthew 8 and 10. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. When Jesus heard he marveled saying there is no such faith, not in not in Israel. So some people, some people believe that the rump that guy was an Israelite. And then some people take the, the stance that he was a non-Israelite and that we were lacking faith. Um, I don't have a problem with either way, honestly. Um heathens can can believe uh i mean we see ruth believed rahab believed um uh acor the ammonite and the apocrypha he believed uh <laughs> so i don't i don't have a problem with that um even the canaanite woman she believed that doesn't get them a ticket to salvation or yeah. that, that can't make uh them able to escape the judgment on their their ethnicity or their nation yeah but that's the main way I try to break it down to them, but they just ignorant to it. It's like, oh, well, no, he she received or he she received salvation. It's like, no, just because they have faith does not mean anybody can have faith. But will you still like you know as like that's not as cute? Will you will your judgment not be placed upon you? It's still gonna happen to them. They just have happen to have that little crumb of receiving maybe some help or getting healed or something like there that. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, that's true. Yep, that's a crumb. 
That's a crumb. A crumb does not equate to a loaf. The loaf is salvation. Mm -hmm. Christ already promised that they only get the crumbs. Exactly. But that's all I wanted to talk about, though. So appreciate it. All right. Shalom, King. Uh, brother Kaleem. Shalom, brother. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Huh? What's happening, King? Talk to me. Talk to me, God. Okay, Kyle. You know, I just got a comment, man. You know, I got a comment. That's it. Go ahead. Um, talk. I just want to say this. If the law is done away with, then that means sin is done away with. So if that's the case, then there's no need for liberty or none of that. Jesus is in vain. <laughs> right, Jesus is good, in vain. That's a good you see point. What I'm yeah, you know, I just I just wanted to make that statement for all you Christians out there watching. Y'all getting cut up, man, and can't take it. Dicky, keep getting it to him, man. All oh, praise to the most high. Shalom, God. Shalom, man. Okay, so now let's let's uh I don't know who this is, so let's bring him on. Hey, shalom, shalom. What's going on? D classified pineal. D hey, how you doing, brother? We good. What's going on, King? Talk to me. I just had a couple quick questions because I, I saw most of the stream and I'm kind of new to the Hebrew Israelite, but I just had a couple quick questions mm -hmm, go ahead. to see what's different between this and Christianity. Okay. So do y'all believe in the Messiah? Yes, sir. But we don't do believe in the Trinity, though. We don't believe in the Trinity, uh, but we believe that who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is the son of God and the Messiah. Yes. Do you have to ex accept him the same way the Christians do, like pray no. and accept him to come into your heart? No, they they pray to him. He told you to pray to the father. They worship him. He told you to worship the father. So they're not accepting him the proper way. And they're also committing idolatry by worshiping him as if he is Yahweh or Yahweh. OK. And then. So when it comes to him dying on the cross did do y'all believe too that he died for everybody's sin no he said that he was only going to shed his blood for the israelites that's isaiah 53 and 8 acts 5 and 29 to 31 matthew 15 to 24 so he died for the world of israel okay okay that that's a good one because that one i was confused about last thing is this i heard you you were talking earlier um, the guy kept asking you how you know you're an Israelite, mm -hmm. and he asked you if you know through your father's lineage. So is it only through your father's lineage? It can't be. It's not through your mother's lineage? Yeah, so the Bible is a patriarchal book, and you trace your lineage uh, patrilineally, meaning through your father. So your father's father's father. So you got to be of your father's seed to be an Israelite, an ethnic Israelite. You ever heard of a brother called uh, Divine Prospect? Yes, sir. He's I saw his one of his things and he said on video that he's Semitic through his mother. Well, so is uh, that not true or I can't comment on on his statement because I'd have to hear that he said that in fact. But what I can tell you is numbers one and 18, Ezra two and 59 and uh, wisdom of Solomon seven and one. It, it proves that you are who your father is. That's how your nationality is determined. No, I'm not asking to um, throw throw any issue at him. I'm asking because like in the Hebrew Israelites, do you all all believe the same thing or is it different? Belief? Well, yeah, there's difference of beliefs within our community. Absolutely. OK, OK. All right. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate you answering the questions. All right, brother. We live again tomorrow, Lord willing. So. You know, keep studying, keep researching, and keep asking questions. That's what I did when I first woke up. Matter of fact, I asked so many questions to my elders, they were starting to get mad at me. <laughs> all right, all right. I appreciate you. All right, shalom, brother. Oh, right, we got somebody named Dexter. Dexter, Dexter, you're live on the show. Dexter, shalom, 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 shalom. 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 Um, I just want to say that was a beautiful debate, man. That was a beautiful debate. You did your thing. It was very entertaining at the same time. And I want to humbly say to our Christians, Israelite brothers and sisters in the chat, I know y'all watching. I seen y'all in the chat. Let that show you Deacon was dead ass serious the whole time. As soon as.
this. He said, state your source. Let's go on the source. Y'all know y'all seen them change the subject, start asking about other things that wasn't irrelevant with the topic he was bringing out. You can't deny that because deep down, they know who we are and they hate it and they don't know how to deal with it. And they ha it's a pride thing. You know, it's just a pride thing with Esau. But let you see how they didn't have to deal with no sources, uh, 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 no facts. When he says stated, they went changed the whole topic. I, I know y'all see that. That's all I want to say, Deacon. You did your thing. Shalom, brother. Shalom, God. Yeah, you know, you ask a Christian for a source, they don't know, especially a historical source, to say we're Hamites and not Israelites. They got nothing. All right. So Isaiah, Isaiah, Shalom, King. What's going on, brother? Shalom, deep. Shalom, shalom. On, yeah, so man. <clears throat> that that was that was horrible. <laughs> that was absolutely horrible, man. Like I'm just pretty much saying again what the brother said just now, like. Anything, every time you said stay the source or bring out a fact, they just couldn't do it. And I got, man, every time I watch these, I get very edified. But I would like to read the scriptures. That's cool. All praises. Go ahead, King. You got it. All right. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. And it reads, hold on, lock it. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. This is red letters, Christ's words. It say, but let your communication be yay, yay. Nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh evil. So you know that mm. Esau's a damn devil. He's not going to answer none of your questions, man. But that was right. a beautiful debate, man. That was very All praises, man. That. Hey, greatly appreciate you, brother. Keep tuning in, man. Any other questions, let me know. We'll be live again tomorrow. Lord willing. Come on. Someone, someone. someone. Okay. Now we have uh, no, no captivity. No captivity. No captivity. Hello? Yeah, Shalom. Mm -hmm. Shalom, man. Um, I got a simple question, man. I don't know if it's a stupid question, but um, I know uh, I was taught that when we pray, we're supposed to pray to the east all the time. Well, when we're outside of our land, it really, it really says to pray toward your land. So if you're east of the land, you would have to pray west. If you're west of the land, you would have to pray east. Okay, so this is my question. This is stupid. Oh, it sounds like a stupid question, but let's just say, like, if I'm riding in my car and I just feel like praying, but I'm going a different direction, am I supposed to wait till I get out of my car to pray or something? I mean, I know nah, it's a stupid nah, question. Nah, nah, you can you can pray without ceasing, but you know there should be. Hold on, real quick. Hold on. Yeah, my bad. Go ahead, brother. No, no, I was just saying if I'm if I'm riding in my car and I know when I pray, I'm in my mind I'm thinking I'm supposed to pray, you know, pray towards motherland. Yeah, but yeah. But I'm in my car. Yeah. But yeah. I want to pray right then. Am I supposed to wait? Oh. Right. I got you. Got you. So the Bible says to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? Pray every time you get a chance. But there it the Bible also talks about the prayer at the night and the prayer in the morning. What's your actual prayer life, your actual devotion to the most high? That should be dedicated and allocated to the most high in the proper way. So being that we're here on the West, then, you know, your nightly prayer, your morning prayer, you should be on your knees or on your face prostrate uh, facing your homeland. But, you know, if you're driving, of course, you could always pray to the most high. Oh man, I appreciate that information. So, so our our uh, formal prayers is in the in the morning and at night before I go to bed. That's what you're saying. And I'm supposed to pray to the homeland, which is in which is towards the east in our situation, which we're living in America, right? Yes, sir. But you could also let's say you got time. You ain't got the kids ain't there, the wife ain't there, and it's it's three p.m. It's not the morning. It's not the night. It's just the afternoon. You could get on your knees in your prayer closet and face the east and do your thing at that time too. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that that's all I had, man. Okay, uh, I pre appreciate your time, bro. All praises, shalom, brother. All right. Somebody asked about Zechariah two and eleven. Zechariah two and eleven. Somebody also asked about Daniel's statue in Daniel chapter two. That's dealing with the Babylonian kingdom, the Persian kingdom, the Greek kingdom, the Roman kingdom, and then. 
the toes representing uh, America, which would be the revised Roman Empire. But Zechariah 2 and 11. Zechariah 2 and 11. Which I should know that by heart, but for some reason, I don't. Zechariah 2 and 11. It says, and many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people and I will dwell in the midst of thee and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. So there's something in the Bible called an order to prophecy. When you read Jeremiah chapter 12, let me give you a precept to that so you can understand when the Lord is going to have mercy and compassion on these other nations. The Lord is not going to have mercy and compassion on these other nations until they go into slavery and captivity, which is our divine retribution and our divine reciprocity. We have to get our vengeance. That's what the Bible says. So when you read Jeremiah 12, this will be the precept to your question. Jeremiah 12 and uh, look at this. Jeremiah 12 and 14. It says, thus saith the Lord against all my evil neighbors. That's all the heathens. And look what it says that touched the inheritance, which I gave my people Israel. So all nations have had a part in spoiling us and taking us captive and parting our land or we're behind it or uh, benefiting from it. So on. Right. Look what it says. Behold, I will pluck them up out of their land. So he's going to pluck the heathens out of their land. Why? Why is he going to pluck them out of their land? So they can go in our land and go into slavery and build the kingdom, as Isaiah 60 says. Watch this. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land. So he's going to pluck the heathens out of their land. And I will pluck the house of Judah from among them, too. Because we were heavily scattered. All, all, the, all Israel were scattered, but Judah was heavily scattered. So he's plucking us from among the heathen. And he's plucking the heathens out of their land, too. To do what? To go back to the land of Israel. So Isaiah 14 could take place, which is their captivity in our land and building up our walls. Verse 15, and it shall come to pass that after I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them. So he said that he was going to have compassion on the other nations after he plucks them out and up, uproots them for slavery. Right. On them. And I will bring them again, every man to his heritage, every man to his own land. This proves that these other nations are not going to be living in Israel after slavery. I mean, we'll have servants and they'll be subjugated, but after slavery, they'll have their own land. So that would be your precept to Zechariah 2. Motivation 317, I'm going to answer your question. Ask your question again. This will be my last question. Motivation 3 and 17. Motivation 3 and 17. This will be my last question unless somebody wants some smoke. Like this guy right here said, your mom and dad has to be a... Um, Israelite for you to be an Israelite. Well, that means Moses' sons aren't Israelites. That means King Rehoboam is not an Israelite. He's mentioned in Chronicles. He entered the temple. He was king. That means Absalom wouldn't be an Israelite. You hear, you hear how you sound? You got to start with the stupidness or click the link so your, 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 your congregation can see you get confounded. Um, oh, my God. Look at, look at this guy's name. That's hilarious. I can't even say it. They might... They might get mad at me for doing it. They might put me on it back on the ADL for saying this name. Hey, Shalom, brother. Turn off your YouTube in the back. Shalom, Mop. Yahoo, Bashim, Yahoo, Shah, Barakata. Hey, Shalom, brother. What's going on, King? Quick question. Um, could you hold me down with like a breakdown for Job 21 and um it's 28? And it reads, for ye say, where is the houses of the princes? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Okay, one second. Oh, okay. Job 21 and 28. Con. <coughs> mm -hmm. Hmm. Because I know it's talking about the destruction of like oh okay you go into the I next like yeah 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 right 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 so so basically it's saying that when he destroys everything we're gonna be telling our kids about how 
how wicked this place was, you know, most high willing we make it in the kingdom. We'll be telling our children how wicked this place was, how it got destroyed. It says, you will tell me of rich and wicked people whose houses have vanished because of their sins. Because the title of the chapter is called God Will Punish the Wicked. You're on mute. You're on mute, brother. Con, con. All right. I appreciate okay. it. I, no, no cap. Okay. Shalom, King. Shalom. Praises. Uh, it's not a game. Mike Yo, Kent. Shalom, D. What's going on with you, man? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, King? Yo, so I got a quick question, right? So, um, it's a it's a question, right? Now, for the record, I don't believe in stuff will, right? But in Sirach 15 and 14, it says, I'm paraphrasing that, that uh he left man in his own counsel. To you, would would that be some type of self-will? That's a good question. What uh scripture is that? Uh Sirach. Uh, chapter 15, verse 14. Mm. Okay, so it says, uh, God in 15, and then the main name, so then to the, oh, wow, yeah, that's you see what uh, I'm saying? Yeah, that's 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 problematic. That's very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you why it's problematic, because Romans 8 says that Adam did not have any type of free will. So I'll say this. Right. I'll say I'll say this now. This I is was why stuck, the, man. Yeah. The individual who came on here earlier, he everybody thinks that you're not going to find um complicated scriptures within our our text you know some things are complicated and may seem adverse to other scripture so right what was the authority is what i was trying to tell the, the brother earlier is thus saith the lord in the words of the messiah and when we see our lord speaking he's telling you that he's the one who controls your heart he's the one who forces you to do things he's the one that hardens your heart he, the Bible even says he's the one that makes us error. And this is him right. speaking when saying this. So um, right. in the case of Sirach, from our vantage point, we have the illusion of free will within our mind. That's why the Bible says many plans are in a man's heart, but the Lord determines right. his footsteps. You get what I'm saying? So right. from our vantage point, it seems like we have some choice, but it's all an illusion within our mind because why? Our footsteps are determined by the most high. At the end of the day, okay, yeah, yeah, that's okay. That that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm I'm still on the no self will. Yeah, yeah, he's speaking as a man from his vantage point. Okay, all right, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, man. Shalom, King. Shalom. Shalom. All right. Well, uh, this was great. It was great. It was great. It was great. What I'm gonna do right now is I am going to let you guys i am going to let you guys vibe out like this we gonna vibe out like this we gonna vibe out and say call hello you how about shima mashiaki how shy until somebody said deacon post the link smoke time all right look i'll give one, I'll, I'll, one more body we'll get one more body and the brother said um 317 he says is there any biblical or archaeological clothing i think that's what the brother said is there any proof of i think that's what he said ask that question one more time brother the water sister diamond rose too all right let's see uh where is the brother's question ask your question one more time brother i know i promised to answer your question um Ask it one more time. Oh my goodness. So now we have, can somebody make sure they remind me of motivation 317, what he's trying to ask. 
You not you're not working? Oh, cool. All praises. Okay. Nah, we just Okay. So uh somebody in Edomite. We got Edomite on. Edomite. Yeah, let me ask you a question, Decon. Are you buy are you buying from the chat? Yes. Oh, okay, go ahead. What's your question, Esau? Um so anybody that gets resurrected before the millennial kingdom, if they die before the millennial kingdom, they're gonna have the Torah written on their hearts, correct? No. So if I die tomorrow and I'm gonna be a slave in the millennial kingdom, I'm not gonna get resurrected into the flesh again. Yes, you are. You you think that you think that the people are gonna there's gonna be people that are resurrected with the Torah written on their heart, and then there's gonna be people that are resurrected back into the flesh. Oh, okay. Well, let me show you why you're an Edomite and you should learn from the Israelites because you don't know what you're talking about. So you believe that everybody who gets resurrected on judgment day is gonna have glorified bodies? Yes. Okay, now watch. Well, this. well, it, 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 unless you lived up to the uh, up up to the New Jerusalem coming down, uh, the the Matthew sheep and goats and all no, that. You but said you said what you said, and it's over for you, my boy. If I die tomorrow, I'm not going to get resurrected back into my flesh before the millennial kingdom. I'm going to get resurrected with the Torah written on my heart. Oh, really? Okay. Well, let's just get you all taken care of real quick. All right, serve me up. All right. Is anybody that gets resurrected before the millennial kingdom is going to get the laws truly written on their heart? John, so how are you be five, John chapter 5, verse 29. That's what it says. Well, no, let's start at uh, verse 28. John 5, and we're going to start at verse 28. John 5 and 28. You ready? Yeah, I want your understanding. You're huh? about to have your death, burial, and resurrection right now. Not the resurrection part, but you're going to have your death right now. John chapter 5, verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Who's his? Who's the his voice here? Either Yah or the Messiah. The Messiah, okay. And shall come forth. So they're getting resurrected, right? Okay. From their graves. Come on, okay. man. You're, you're, be, be honest saying... here. Be honest here. Stop playing. This is the resurrection. And they're in their graves. They're going to hear his voice and they're going to come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Do you agree with the text? Yes. Okay. So the wicked that is getting resurrected, they get they're going to be resurrected and glorified bodies only to be destroyed again. Have a good night. All right. Next person. We just going through bodies right now. All right. We got a Mayan. Go ahead. What's your question or comment? Shalom, Deacon. Shalom, brother. Yeah, my question is that uh, someone, you said that um, it is wrong that to, to be an Israelite, that your mother and your father cannot be an Israelite? I said you are who your father is. You don't need a, your mother to be Israel and your father to be Israel to be Israel. Okay, then why why did the Most High order uh, Israel to send away the foreign wives and their children? Well, I think that's, a, that's non sequitur, and I'm going to tell you why. That's a covenant that we made that we didn't want to deal with our children who have been raised up in the customs of their mother. My question, my my statement was you only had to be a Israelite by your father. So you got to deal with that head on. Can somebody be an Israelite with a heathen mother and an Israelite father? Yes or no? No. Okay. So let's go here. And it's too early in the day to 
be killing, be having all these, having all this blood on my hands. Am I in? But I'm just saying, I'm, I'm saying that you, you, you're making a, you're making a statement that we was the one that sent them away. And I'm saying that the most high ordered Israel to do that. That was, yeah. And high. it tells you, and it tells you why. And it still didn't say the kids weren't Israelites. So that would be a false equivalent. Now look at this, the family of David. First Chronicles 3 and 1. Now these were the sons of David, which were born unto him in Hebron. The firstborn, Amnon, and Ahinoam, the Jizraelitis, from the Jizra, uh, the second, Daniel, of the uh, of Abigail, the Carmelitis. Here goes the kicker. Verse 2. The third son, Absalom. Look at his mom. The son of Makkah, the daughter of Telmah, king of Jeshur. King of Jeshur is the Syrians. His mother was Syrian. I'm sorry. Yeah, his mother was Syrian, and her father was king of the Transjordan area, which is Syria. King David couldn't even go there. He didn't have jurisdiction there, which is why Absalom, Absalom ran and hid there from him, and King David was sad. So why is the Bible saying that Absalom, who was also king, is reckoned as a Judite here if your father, father and mother have to be Israelite? I mean, it's he, just saying that how you're son of David. That doesn't say that he's an Israelite. Because according to the Most High, you have to have your, your mother and your father be Israelite. That's the reason why I referenced Israel, because he said to send them away. Wait, he was a king. He was a king. So we were going off for making him king, and he also walked in the temple. We he's talking about Absalom? He, yeah, Absalom. He's mentioned as an Israelite. This is our genealogy. You know what Chronicles means? I, I understand, but you're not addressing what the Most High had Israel to do. Yeah, I did. I, I said he put them away because they were learning the customs of their mothers as contrary to learning the custom of their fathers. Nowhere in Ezra did it say those kids weren't Israelites. Wait a minute. So let's, deal, so let's deal with this. Let's deal with this head on. Matter of fact, I got one more for you. I'm dealing with it head on. You, you, you're saying that the Most High ordered them to send away their wife and the child. No, 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 no. no, no. Show me where God ordered them. God didn't order anything. Ezra. 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 Ezra did that. Yeah, show me where God, show me in Ezra where it said God said him, told him to do that. Let's, let's go to Ezra chapter 10. Okay, go ahead. All right. Let me pull it up right quick. Ezra chapter 10, verse 3, it says, Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God. To put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, of, of my of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it, it be done according to the law. So right. first of all, so first of all, it states that was doing that according to Torah. Okay. That's what I want to mention. They're doing it according to Torah. Okay, that's the mm -hmm. first thing it says right there. So it doesn't it wasn't because our custom was following Torah, it says. Okay, right, let, me, let me help you out real quick. Let me help you out for one. What verse, what verse was that? Let me, finish. let me finish. I'm proving my point to you now. On, what, verse, what verse did you start at? Verse three. Okay, go ahead. You got it. Okay, so um, that's the first point. It did it according to the Torah, it says. The second point is that the... But wait, but wait, Amon, I'm going to give it back to you, but let's let's deal with this slowly because you, you, you falsely stated that God told us to do that. This no, was... Listen, let me read it. You did say that. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God. Have you ever made a covenant with God? Me personally, no. Well, I've made a covenant with God, and he didn't tell me to do it. I made a covenant not to gamble, uh, not to drink in certain cases. He didn't tell me to do it. I did it. And that's the same case here. So you can't say God came down from his throne and told Ezra to do that. That's not in the text you'd be adding to the Bible. Well, I, I read it for you. It, it, it says, it says, according to the counsel of the of my Lord, it says, right? That's what it says, right? Now, what I'm saying to you is this, that the Sohephrim, they tell you that they changed God's name from Yahweh to Adonai. Right here, they tell you, they said, we have took God's name out of here and put Adonai there. So originally it was God's name that was here. So when it says according to the council of Yahweh was actually here, it says originally the Sahifum admit to this. Amayan, I'm it. asking you to show me where God said to do this. And not only that, not only that, because that's that's not the point. Where is it saying that these guys, these kids are not Israelites? Now we're getting to something else. You said you had to be an Israelite by your mother or your father. So let me ask you this. 
if a Chinese man has sex with an East Indian woman, what is the baby's nationality? I'm going to answer your question, but you have to acknowledge that what God told Israel to do this. Well, I'm, I'm not acknowledging that, and that's besides the point. Okay. The point is, is, are these kids Israelites? And you're not going to find that answer here within this text. It's, according to, if, if God said send them away, then they can't be. Oh, oh, really? So, so if God sent, show me where it's against the law to send your child away. It's against your, God told them to do it, it's against the law. I'm asking you to show me how this proves that they are not Israelites. So this because, is a false equivalent. You have to show me. To send them away. No, answer my, answer my question, because this is very rudimentary and elementary. What ethnicity is the baby from a Chinese man and East Indian woman? Mixed. Mamzer. Oh, Mamzer. Okay, Mixed. cool. Okay, cool. So a Mamzer can enter into the temple of God? No. So why did why was Absalom in the temple? Why was Rehoboam in the temple? Why did they get, why did they elect them to be king? Can a Mamzer be king over Israel? According to the Torah, the, the Torah says God got to pick the king. God never picked Rehoboam to be king. He never picked Rehoboam. Rehoboam was righteous at a point and walked through the temple. Excuse me? Show me where God picked him to be king at in the text. First Kings 14 and 21. I want you to I want to ask you this. Let's read it. Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was not Amah and Ammonitus. I'm going to ask you a question. Was King Rehoboam a Mamzer? Yes or no? Yes. Wow. Why does the Bible call him a Judite? Where? What are you talking about? He's from Judah. He's a oh. Mamzer. Oh, my goodness. What is a Mamzer? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What is a man? So a Mamzer has an ethnicity? It's a mixed child. Does a Mamzer have an ethnicity? Yes or no? What you mean? I'm telling you what the Bible say. A mixed a Mamzer. That's what the okay, Bible so why would you just say he's from the tribe of Judah? Because you agree what the Bible says, that he I was said, from the tribe of Judah. I said a, a location, Judah. A location. <laughs> he's from it. Hey, he's confused. Right, you're not, you're, you're, you're he's confused. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back. Here. If God said put him away, why are you arguing with that? Okay, let's go back here. Let's go back here. Now you running now. No, let's go back here. And if, if God say put him away, then put him away. Simple as that. Why are you arguing hold anything else? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me put a link in the chat. Let me put another link in the chat. Because these people got some questions for you. Let me you guys, let me let you guys come on here and cut him. No, he already got no, dad. No, he already no, got two. Cannot argue with God. So I don't know what. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He already got two dashes. My man is confused. So we're gonna let you guys come on here and cut the brother. <laughs> hey, Amayan, Amayan, is it cool? Me going against God. So I don't Amayan, talk Amayan, listen. Is it cool if the people come on here and cut you? Yes, come on, bring them. Okay, cool. He said bring it. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen. I don't know what they're gonna bring against the Most High God. I don't know what they're gonna bring. It's crazy. Okay, hold on. All right, we got one. Ariala, shalom, brother. What's going on? What's your question to the guest? Shalom. So, uh, what's his brother's name? Uh, Amayan. Amayan. What's the word for for uh, my Lord in the verse that you took us to? Uh, in Ezra ten and three. Yes. What's that word? The word there is Adonai. Adonai. Who? What does Adonai mean? Lord or master? It means my master. Who? Who? Who's speaking? Who's speaking in Ezra 10? It's Ezra speaking. Oh, so okay, so Ezra speaking. Who's he speaking? Ezra speaking? Who's he speaking to? Who's having a conversation in Ezra 10? He's speaking to the people. Okay, he's speaking to the people. So where's Yahweh at in this? Where it says, according to the counsel of my Lord, I said that the Sahifram who wrote this text here. They admitted that they changed God's name from no, 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 no. no. What, te what, te what text are you Brilliant. reading from? Stop cutting me off. Let me finish. Yeah, let, let, what let, text on, are you reading from? Hold on, real quick, real quick, real quick. Let's 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 try to get. We want to get on, uh, Matt, uh, Amaya, Amayan. Sorry, Amayan. Uh, let him state his case, 
And then Ariala, you vet it. Go ahead, Amaya. But try not to be long winded. We got a few couple more people in here. I was answering this question. I mean, he cut me off. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. It's good. I'm saying that the the so he from who wrote this text that we have today from the, from the, from the Masorites, they said that we took God's name out of this verse right here and put Adonai here. Prove yeah. that. Huh? Prove it. Yeah, where's okay. your source? Where's your source to prove that? No problem. As a matter of fact, the source is the source that you had used about a week ago, Deacon, when you were doing your show on the um the gospel written in Hebrew. You pulled up, you pulled up this um, is not the gospel. You healed up so let me finish, you, you pulled up E.W. Billinger. E.W. Billinger pulls up and he showed you the references where the see from said that the change God's name. I can pull it up right now. Let me pull it up for you and show you. The same source. This is not the gospel. This is the book of Ezra. Uh what are you talking about, bro? We're reading the book of Ezra, which is found in the Masoretic text, right? So what are you saying? What's your point? So what you're saying is BS. That's not what's going on. How am I saying it's BS? How am I saying it's BS? So why did they not take out the Lord all throughout the Masoretic text? They did it in 137 places, they said. Not only here. It's in the only Prove place. it. One well, second. Let me pull it up on, on, on the line for you and show you. One second. Oh, online. Okay, cool. I'm going to put up the same source Deacon used for his last show that he did on, 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 on the Hebrew. Okay, cool. Same source he used, I'm going to pull up. We'll see. Anyway. Come on, this is this is light work, bro. You need to go. Oh, it's light work. Hey, uh, are you an Israelite, Amayan? Huh? How do you feel about the Canaanites? Nothing. What about the Canaanites? Do you believe they're going into captivity? Like, what's your worldview on the Hamites? Huh? Oh, okay. So Rahab, Rahab the Canaanite, she's going into captivity too. Rahab the Canaanite is dead, bro. Okay, but she was a Canaanite though, right? Simple. The text says that. Okay, so she was a Canaanite. Now, watch this. I just set you up. Watch the setup. Now, Deuteronomy 23 and 2, it says, A bastard, which is a mamzer, right, cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. They can't enter forever, a mamzer. Do you agree with the text? What are you reading from? Uh, I'm trying to pull this source up, bro. It's okay, I'll let you get that in a second. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. A mamzer cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to the 10th generation shall he not, meaning even at the 10th generation of Mamzer can't enter the congregation. Do you agree with the text? Huh. Okay, cool. So anybody who's mixed cannot enter into the congregation forever. You agree with the text? Huh. Okay, in Matthew 1, why do we see Rahab, the Canaanite, in the lineage of Christ? That means Christ can't enter into the congregation forever. She just putting down what actually took place. How how was she in the congregation of the Lord if the Lord didn't want them in there according to no 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 Lord. no Deuteronomy 23 and 2 says a byproduct of a mamzer cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Here we see Rahab, who you said was a Canaanite, is, is a foremother of Christ. So Christ can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Christ didn't come to sex, bro. Wow, wow. I can prove that too. I can prove that too. So okay, no, 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 no. Ariella, Ariella, don't worry about it. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, cool. Now watch hold this. On, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now listen. This is why I always tell people: you can let a nigga get the first base and second base, but he ain't coming home. Now watch this. Rahab is in King is King David's foremother, so he can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Do you agree with that? Oh, You're bro. done. You're oh, done, my boy. Oh, You're done. done, my boy. <laughs> listen, oh, my listen. Finito. Deuteronomy, no, no, no. Your head is on the ground. Deuteronomy 23 and 2 says, a mamzer cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. You said a mamzer is a mixed person. Now, Deuter now in Matthew 1, meaning the baby from Rahab and Boaz, their babies going down and down and down and down and down, can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever, and King David was one of them. That's a lie. Read the Bible. Okay. Matthew 1 and 5. And Solomon begat Boaz. Who's Boaz? Bo Bo Boaz is the son of uh, Solomon and uh, Rahab. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Boaz begat. Bo right. Solomon and Rahab. Right? Huh. Okay. So. And then Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. Huh. Now, Obed was begotten by an Israelite father and Canaanite mother. So this baby shouldn't be able to enter into the congregation. And then he begot Jesse. That baby shouldn't be able to enter the congregation. And then Jesse begot David. That baby shouldn't be able to enter into the congregation, according to your logic. 
Okay, now the, the, your problem is this: you don't do chronology. That you don't see that there is a four hundred and five year gap between between uh, Obed and Jesse. I can prove that too as well, but you don't see because you don't do chronology. Wait, 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 wait. Wow. Wait, wait. wait hold on. Prove that too. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said from Obed to Jesse is five hundred years. Four hundred and five. That means oh that Obed lived to be four hundred years old. Bye, my nigga. I can't do it. I'm Lord sorry. Christ. AOD. Old bed was 400 years old. What's up? Right, go ahead. All right. So let, let's let's dispel this whole nonsense that this guy's talking about in, in Ezra 10, right? So Ezra 10 and 2. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehaliel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra. This is who's speaking. We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, so who's speaking still? It's still this guy, Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, right? Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God. All right, they're not talk he's not talking to Yahweh. He's talking to Ezra to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord. Who's counseling them on the situation? Ezra's counseling them. So the Adonai that's here is Ezra, not Yahweh. Adonai does not necessarily mean Yahweh. Right. Because on. guess what? King David called Saul Adonai. Right. Anyone that's out here teaching that is an idiot. You don't know the Bible, right? Because typically what Christians will do, is they'll go to Hebrews 1 and Hebrews 2 and say, you see, we see here in the in the Greek, the word is Kyrios, right? And that's the equivalent to Adonai. And Christ is called Adonai, so he has to be the most high God. No, that's not, that's, absolutely ridiculous that's contextually dishonest that's that's scripturally dishonest these guys don't know the bible come all praises now look at this look at this look at this so he said have we ever found any tombs clothes statues from biblical times yes just look up uh hebrew archaeology brother now look at this look at this this dude said let the last caller back on that must be his friend you want me to let a nigga on who thought niggas was still living to be 500 years old during the time of david nigga are you crazy <laughs> Nigga, man, even David himself said man's years are seven, about 70 years old. And this nigga is saying niggas was living till four to 500 years during the time of David. Fuck you talking about? Shalakia. All right. We got a brother named BT. Go ahead, brother. Shalom, all praise to the most high God. Shalom, King. Foremost, always. So now. They're not people. Uh, brother, your uh, your connection is 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 bad, brother. I'm bad. How about now? Yeah, you're good. Go ahead. So you mix cake batter, not people. And all praises to the Most High. First of all, <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. So, but there's uh scriptures though, being because I got a. Uh, a white mom right but my dad is judah according to things right so titus 3 9 you know those that scripture yeah so can you elaborate because i know there's like the charts and everything talking about how you guys were talking about the dude before that was talking about oh you it's from the father and i agree but then what if somebody was adopted you know well if you're adopted then you know you just got to try to find out your history if not you have to have that faith the bible says the sheep are going to hear his voice you know and also romans 8 and 16 your spirit bears witness and then the brothers gonna, around you are going to try your spirit mm. So now with that though too, then you see the charts, then you hear you have scriptures, Titus 3 9. You know what I'm saying? And this this is all unification for the most high elect. You know, want to say that always. So, but Titus 3 9, you hear how the chart comes up. People always talking junk, like, oh, but I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. But Titus 3 9, and that's scripture because you see people always feuding over the chart. Right. Okay. So, um, first Titus three and nine, where it says, 
uh, endless genealogies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's talking about what we were doing back then is we were saying we were this person in the reincarnation or we could trace our purse, our, our um, lineage all the way back to damn <laughs> uh, Samson when our records were destroyed, people were doing that. So they were, Paul is condemning them for doing that. Not necessarily saying it's wrong to trace your genealogy or to how you, or, you know, the method in which we prove that we're Israelites. So now, okay, and then, so I know seven, six, Deuteronomy seven, six, they talk about making marriages and stuff. Uh, being that, you know, I, I love my mama. All, I'm going to always honor my mama. You know what I'm saying? So, and my daddy. But you got uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6, you know. But then you go to Deuteronomy 7, 1, and it says the seven nations not to make marriages with. And I know motherfuckers always talk about Edomite and this and Edomite that. But in the, the seven nations mentioned in 7, 1, it doesn't say Edomite. So, can you help mm -hmm. that? Well, no, that's true. When you go to the law, we're only prohibited to have marriages with those seven Hamite nations. Um, it, it's not suggested. It's always uh, encouraged and suggested that we deal with our own people. But as far as it transgressing the law, you'll only find in Deuteronomy 7, those seven Canaanite nations. Okay. So that's like but you hear because the camps like this unify the camps need to unify this you got to unify the most highs of let so well, now how I you would... said that you know but because like you because you see somebody like myself personally yeah i don't want i'm not confused at all but you know when you got judah as your patriarch then you got edomite as your matriarch you know what I'm saying? But then you say, well, well, you're still, no matter what, you're still an Israelite. The Bible says he's going to save the seed of Abraham. I'm sorry, the seed of Jacob. Okay. Jacob has a seed. He put his seed in a woman. 12 kids came out. They put their seeds. All of their seeds are Israelites. The man carries the seed. The biology will tell you that. The Bible tells you that. So keep the law, statutes, and commandments, brother. Worry First. about yourself. You all right, King? Oh, yeah. All right, Shalom. I brother. appreciate that. Shalom to y'all, too. To uh, Tobiah, what's up, huh? <laughs> Let me answer this, this question on the screen real quick. Uh, <laughs> well, no, Jacob only had 12, 12 sons. But Joseph got so big, it split into two, Ephraim and Manasseh. But let me go here, because somebody said, it didn't say forever. Watch this. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even, not until, but even to his 10th generation, shall he not enter the congregation of the Lord. People just don't know how to read. Let's prove that even more. Hello? Yeah. Nah, man, we're not doing that. But I'm still alive, though. All right. Uh, Nehemiah 13 and 1. On the day they read in the book of Moses, so they're reading here, they're reading Deuteronomy 23, in the audience of the people, and there was found written that an Ammonite and a Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. You guys get it? You can't come in the con congregation of the Lord forever. That's what it means. Tenth generation, even then they can't get in. Watch this. With the even with the Ammonite and Moabite, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. So when a dummy tries to say a man's is a mixed person, they're saying King David cannot enter to the congregation of the Lord forever, neither Solomon, 
neither Rio Bone, neither Josephat, all the way down to who we call, uh, who the Lord ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Oh, Zerubbabel's there. These niggas are retarded. I'm going to have to isolate that. A Mayan gets cut to shreds again. Why do blind, ignorant coons follow him? All right. That's going to be the title. A Mayan, a Mayan cut again. How does he even have a congregation? You guys know I think that guy has a congregation. That's crazy. Got some silly Negroes and silly women. So anyway, um, let's rock out like this, y'all. We have reached our three-hour mark. Let's rock out like this. I'm going to end this by giving all praises, honor, and glory to you. How we do so by Shem Mashiach. Till next time, Shalom. Popping perks, popping mollies, and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I'm the cocky. Twelve Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True. Some sisters is dead traps, hair wraps, but just in the dark. No filler. Get all your truth music at deaconsakari.com. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. All on deaconsakari.com. Even your head wraps stay dipped, stay brewed, dripping. And sign up to the Patreon. Sign up to patreon.com slash Deacon Sakari to get the exclusive YouTube videos that YouTube will flag and also early releases as well. Shirt on. If you out pushing this truth, get your work on. Sakari. We are the children of the one Yahweh. Chosen. Ye are the chosen of the one Yahweh. And he has given his love to us. Now everything belongs to us. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh, shit. shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. He bruised. 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 They done let them bruise in the dough.